Act one unfolds in Tempe, Arizona. The Fiesta Bowl, 24 unanswered third quarter points for Michigan. Two touchdowns for quarterback Jim Harbaugh. Then they hold off a late Nebraska rally. The Wolverines win, 27-23. Act two in Pasadena. Eric Ball, 19-year-old freshman, scores a record-tying four touchdowns. A near record 228 yards on the ground. And another victory for the Pac-10 over the Big Ten, 45-28. Now the finale as we go to Miami. Play like a champion, a sign that's been part of the Oklahoma locker room for decades. Every Sooner taps the sign before he takes the field. The Oklahoma Sooners, number two in the nation, still smarting from an upset loss to Washington in the Orange Bowl a year ago. Tonight, the Nittany Lions of Penn State come in undefeated and number one in the country, but they are a decided underdog. Good evening, everyone. Don Cricky with Bob Trumpy on a great night in Miami, Florida for this most important game, a matchup of college football heavyweights, and they both trained hard for this showdown. Penn State coach Joe Paterno says Trump, he's never had a more dedicated, hardworking football team. And I tell you what, too, Penn State is looking for respect. When it was very obvious a number of weeks ago that Penn State was going to play a New Year's Day Bowl, Paterno went to the team and said, where do you want to go? The team said, we want the biggest challenge. Tonight, they find it in Oklahoma, a team that's been here an awful lot. And as you said, a year ago, they lost their chance for the national championship. Players are rededicated this year. They came down December 20th, have worked very hard for this showdown with the number one team in the country, Penn State. On the field to also cover the game, former Dolphin great Bob Greasy and a former Penn State and Dolphin standout Jimmy Cephalo. Bob? Thanks, Don. And you know, Jimmy, the key to this game may get down to the quarterbacks. For Penn State, John Schaefer, I think he's going to have to establish the pass very early to take some pressure and put some pressure on that Oklahoma number one defense. On the other side of the field, I think Jamel Holloway, he's the, the uh, leader of the wishbone offense, and I think he's going to have to keep the ball off the ground and really try to get something going for that offensive team. Well, emotionally, Holloway will have to play very well. He's just a freshman, as you mentioned. It's interesting to note that early in the week, the Penn State team seemed very quiet, very sedate, maybe a little bit too tight, while the Oklahoma players were more boisterous, having a good time here in South Florida. But that changed when they came onto the field. Tonight. Penn State seemed to be more enthusiastic, jumping around, slapping each other on the helmets, while the Oklahoma Sooners were more quiet. We'll be back with the kickoff. Number one, Penn State. Number two, Oklahoma. The national championship tied to the outcome in just a moment. Here come the Sooners in their crimson and cream. A year ago, they came into the Orange Bowl, a chance at a national championship. And a very sharply trained Washington team under Don James upset them 28-17, and the Sooners, Trump, have not gotten over that. Uh, there are a lot of players from the Oklahoma Sooners who, when they came to the Orange Bowl this week to practice, they were all mentioning they had bad memories of this place. The last time the Sooners played on grass was last year's Orange Bowl loss to the Washington Huskies. And Barry Switzer has put these guys through an awful lot of work. They came down here very early, had two a days. Seems to be a rededication of the football team, and they're not to be denied tonight. But Penn State, on the other hand, I repeat, looking for respect tonight. They just did the coin flip with the new Statue of Liberty coin. About to do that right now as Michael Zordich, 43 to your right, steps in for the Nittany Lions. An All-American rover back, the hero they call him. He's a key to Penn State's stopping the wishbone if they can. Let's listen. I don't know, but they got three coins there. Is it odd man out? Yes. Yes. Got to figure it out. All right. Wait a minute. Did I just hear? They won the toss. Penn State won the toss, and they will go on defense. The choice is to Oklahoma, and Penn State has their choice to begin the second half. I think Joe Paterno wants to put his defense on the field first, Don. Interesting choice by Joe Paterno. And there's the engine you just saw in the Oklahoma offense, quarterback Janelle Holloway, as Coach Paterno in his 20th year as head man. 
A very quietly confident football coach that his team is ready for a super effort, and they're going to need one to beat an Oklahoma team that, since Holloway's taken over at quarterback, has averaged 38 points a game over the last seven games. And Oklahoma, as you may know, is number one in America in defense, giving up less than nine points a game. Penn State is not impressed, though. They really are not impressed. We can, um, I think, expect a couple of special defenses against the wishbone. And I came down to Miami thinking that this was a slow team from the Northeast. I was wrong. Penn State's defense has outstanding quickness and speed. And I think they can compete with the wishbone of Oklahoma. But that's the biggest problem that any team faces playing against the wishbone. That great speed of Oklahoma. Penn State has had problems defending option teams. At back from Temple, Paul Palmer rushed for 215 yards against the Nittany Lions. They gave up over 400 yards to the Temple team. Did beat them. As you know, Penn State's won every game, some of them very close. Late in the season, though, they really got a cooking as they blew out Notre Dame and then Pittsburgh. And they rolled into this game with a five and a half week layoff, having put in their hardest work ever for any football game under Paterno. And that's a lot of work. Penn State also a streak of five straight bowl victories. Back deep now for the Oklahoma Sooners, Anthony Stafford, a sprinter from St. Louis. He's a freshman. And Patrick Collins, number 33 from Miami, Florida. UCLA, a runaway victor, 45 to 28 in the Rose Bowl. Just completed at Pasadena, you saw on NBC Sports. And here is Massimo Monke into the ball for Penn State. A spinner. And it's taken by Stafford, Anthony Stafford. The freshman is cautioned to down the ball. So the Sooners send out their offense with freshman Jamel Holloway from Carson, California. He's been absolutely a standout since taking over when the regular starter fractured a leg. Liddell Carr, a power back to fullback, second leading rusher. Speed at the halfback. Spencer Tillman, a breakaway runner with power. And the other back, Patrick Collins, also a sprinter. Jackson, Keith Jackson, the sophomore tight end, some rate is the best in the country. Derek Shepard's the flank. We don't go to him often, but he can get deep. Anthony Stafford now in the starting backfield for Oklahoma. First and ten for the Sooners. And State comes a hit, and the freshman. Stafford on what looked to be Trump a trick play. It certainly didn't turn out to be one as Penn State stuffed it. All-American linebacker Shane Conlon, number 31, made the play. Was going to be a reverse, but the big matchup that we're going to watch all night long is the center, Rich Ewells, against Mike Russo, the nose tackle. You see good penetration there by Tim Johnson of the Penn State defensive line. Jackson was the pitch man, gave it to Stafford, loss on the play. Minus two at second and 12. From the 18-yard line of the Sooners. This time they hit out to about the 22-yard line. Lydell Carr, the fullback, got the ball. He might see it a lot tonight, a sophomore from Enid, Oklahoma. Averaging just over four yards a rush. Big offensive line, Eric Pope is 275. Guard Mark Hudson next to him is 280. The center, Rick Ewells, an undersized center. The starter, Travis Simpson, went down with an ankle fracture. He's only 250. Paul Ferrar is 260 at right guard. And Anthony Phillips could be a great one at tackle. He's only a freshman at 280 pounds. Holloway ties up. And third down. And Penn State shuts down the bone. So on three ties from scrimmage. The Nittany Lions break the bone early. Don Graham made that tackle 53, a senior from Pittsburgh. That's one thing you'll notice about the Nittany Lion defense. They attack that line of scrimmage. They've got defensive linemen who started out as linebackers, Don. Great mobility and great foot speed to get to that exchange point. Mike Winchester is in to punt the ball now for Oklahoma. Jim Coates, the sophomore, is back. Very, very good return man for the Nittany Lions. Jim Coates with an eight-yard return after a 45-yard punt by Winchester gives Penn State good field position. So Trump early, the initial decision by Paterno to kick off worked out well. We'll be back with uh, Nittany Lions on offense right after this. The 1986 Orange Bowl is brought to you by Porsche, inviting you to see the 944 and the new 944 Turbo at your authorized Porsche dealer. 
by Bud Light, everything else is just a life. And by John Hancock Financial Services, meeting today's needs with a range of financial products. The 52nd Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy, Bob Greasy and Jimmy Cephalo as the Nittany Lions of Penn State. Unbeaten, number one in the country, but a decided underdog get the ball for the first time in this scoreless game. D.J. Dozier hits ahead, but a penalty marker goes down. Tony Rayburn, one of the safeties, made the stop for Oklahoma. Might have been motion in the Penn State offense. There was. Referee IA, all the officials from the Southeastern Conference. John Schaefer is the junior quarterback, completing only 45% of his passes, but he's 54-0 as a starting quarterback dating back to grammar school. Steve Smith, a power back, averaging five yards a carry, and he can block D.J. Dozier, the breakaway runner, averaging almost five yards a pop. Eric Hamilton, one of the wide receivers, they don't go to him often, but he can get deep, and so can the other Ray Roundtree, averaging 20 yards a catch. The Oklahoma coaches are very impressed with Dean Demidio, the tight end for the Penn State Nittany Lions. He's caught four for touchdowns this year. Nothing, nothing. Nittany Lions in white. After the penalty, it's first and 15. Dozier, change of pace move at 210 pounds. He can break tackles, and he's a sprinter. Offensive line, Stan Clayton, left tackle 265. Mitch Farratt, next to him, weighs 260. The center is Scott Radisek. His brother, an All-American at Penn State, now at Kansas City, he weighs 255. Todd Moles is the anchor of the offensive line, and Shane and Chris Conlon's the biggest at 275 at right tackle. Nothing, nothing to score. It is second down and 11 for Penn State. Penalty marker down. Demidio is the man they went to, and there could be a call here against the secondary of the Sooners. Tony Rayburn will be called for pass interference. Barry Switzer is saying the ball is uncatchable. Flag should not be thrown. That's a 25-yard penalty. Actually, the pass shouldn't be thrown. He's thrown into double coverage back there, but still tries to get it to Demidio. Turns out to be a big 25-yard gain. You can see Schaefer on third down. He seems to be twice as good a quarterback as he is first and second down. He knows there. I shouldn't throw it. He's thrown into double coverage. Yeah, all right. We'll take it. Any way we can get 25 yards, we're not proud. 25 yards is the assessment of penalty mark off against Oklahoma, so the ball crosses midfield. Barry Switzer protesting from the moment the flag went down. We have 11.52 to play in the first quarter. There's no score. The Sooners with their high power wishbone were shut down on three consecutive runs by the Penn State defense. Nittany Lions elected to kick off in this game. Now, first and 10, Penn State. Football right up the middle, and Nittany Lions go, and they take it down to the 42-yard line of Oklahoma. Steve Smith, a 235-pound fullback, ran it. Tony Casillas, maybe the premier defensive lineman in America, he got the Lombardi Award, a consensus All-American at nose tackle. Next to him is 275-pound tackle Jeff Tupper. Steve Bryan at 260 is an outstanding tackle for the Sooners. Linebackers very fast. Reed and Murphy on the outsides. Kevin Murphy got All-American mention. There's a breakaway run. Steve Smith again. John Adam with just Anvil football hammering at the Sooner defense. Ricky Dixon, the free safety, made the knockdown, but the Nittany Lions are down to the Oklahoma 36. Kevin Murphy, the outside linebacker we saw a moment ago. The inside backers are Paul Meliazzo. And All-American Brian Bosworth, who got the first Butkus Award, is the best linebacker in the country, and he's a sophomore. There's the secondary men. They switch them around. They'll play sometimes corner, sometimes safety. They've not given up a lot of yards to the pass, excepting in that one loss to Miami. Pitch back, Dozier. On first down, he's working hard to the 30-yard line of Oklahoma. The linebacker, Kevin Murphy, knocked him down. Big man to come back in the line, lineup for the Penn State Nittany Lions. Now Dozier had that dislocated elbow. You can see the brace on his left elbow. We'll watch the Butkus Award winner Bosworth attacking that line of scrimmage. A good job by the offensive lineman Todd Mole, 63, getting Bosworth on the ground. It's a nice pickup for Dozier. And the Nittany Lions running well. Smith two carries for 12 yards. Dozier two for nine. Second down and about five. Play fake. 
Papers got a man inside the 20 yard line. It's down to the 18 for a Penn State first down as Eric Hamilton goes high and comes down with a 12 yard reception. And Penn State early in this game is a rolling against the number one defense in the nation. And I think a big part of the psychology of ball games is you're not afraid of your opponent. Penn State has come out here. They win the toss, but they go on defense. Now in offense, they're hammering right at Oklahoma. That time, Derek White in coverage on Hamilton. And Schaefer with an outstanding throw right on the sideline. Good for a first down. Joe Paterno told us, he said, we might need 200 yards passing the ball to win this game. They got 12 there. As the Nittany Lions are now well in field goal range. Out pattern, deep throw. With Ray Roundtree running down on the far flank. Can't get to the ball, so it'll be second down and 10 for the Nittany Lions at the 18-yard line of Oklahoma. Jamel Holloway. The engine in the offense, they call him, waiting for another crack at it to get back on the field. He was stopped on three straight downs. 365 days ago, he was sitting in Los Angeles watching the Orange Bowl with eight of his teammates. And tonight, he's the starting quarterback. He was the Los Angeles area player of the year. Banning High School, they won the city championship, and now he starts as a freshman. Right now, the Nittany Lions are moving on offense. Scoreless game. Dozier. He dislocated an elbow in the final regular season game against Kitt. Came back, says he feels fine, and he looks at tonight as Bosworth got him. Ryan Bosworth, uh, hitting linebacker for Oklahoma. His defense is so built around the nose tackle and the inside linebackers. Bosworth and Miliazzo cover that tackle to tackle area as well as any set of linebackers I have ever seen in college football, Don. Eighth play of the drive coming up. 47 yards in the first seven for Penn State. This is their first possession. It's nothing, nothing. Schaefer cocks and fires, and Ron Free comes down with the ball. Oh. Hamilton coming up. Eric Hamilton comes down with a 14-yard reception to the two-yard line. Ricky Dixon, the free safety, saved a touchdown, if but for the moment. Ron Rontree was open earlier. Schaefer holds this ball a long time from behind the defense. And you can see he's waiting for him to cross Bowsworth 44. Then he throws it into the other linebacker coverage. Rontree still comes up with a big catch. Boy, that's threading the needle right there. His second now for 26 yards. A senior from Cleveland, Ohio, Eric Hamilton. Now first and goal for underdog Penn State. First back, Smith, he's in, it looks like. No signal yet, though. Linesmen come in, and they're not spotting a touchdown until they unpile. Apparently going to rule it, then nose of the ball's at about at the goal line. Down to this point, Penn State offensive line making a big bow in that Oklahoma defensive line. Can you be any closer and not score a touchdown? Look at that offensive line. Look at the charge. Boy, that, that's an excellent job. So now with the nose of the ball actually breaking the plane, it would appear from here, they go second down and goal. This time it's on the book. Tim Manoa, straight ahead pop. And the Penn State Nittany Lions, after the most intense series of practices that Joe Paterno team's ever had, get out and take over the football game at least early, stopping Oklahoma on the Sooners' first possession and then running the ball right down their throat with two big throws that led the way to that touchdown by Manoa. John, John Schaefer, first series, two of three, 26 yards, and that's a quarterback that completes less than 50% of his passes. Guys, 54 and 0 as a start, as we mentioned. Someone said, yeah, but he never played Oklahoma. But right now, with the extra point up and good by Massimo Manca, the Nittany Lions look every bit the number one rating they have. They take a 7 to nothing lead. Look at this big fullback fire in there. Tim Manoa is hungan. He wants to be separated from those people who are Samoan on a friendly basis. He likes the end zone, though. The Goodyear Blimp Enterprise from Pompano Beach, Florida. High above the Orange Bowl, pilot is Captain Patrick Henry from Parsons, West Virginia. This marks the 61st year that Goodyear Blimps have appeared at the nation's top sporting events. Look at that. Oklahoma, number one in the nation in defense, gives up less than nine points a game, and Penn State already has seven on its opening drive from. That's just the fourth rushing touchdown that the Oklahoma defense has allowed so far this, this season. 
Samomaka ready to kick off for a second time. 8.17 to play in the first quarter. Hits a spinner. Anthony Stafford, he can go. Out to the 29-yard line. Coming down to save a much longer game was Eddie Johnson, a 27-yard return. That's the longest kickoff return by the Oklahoma Sooners this year. He sees when Stafford breaks through there. Yeah, get it going, get it going. Uh, he'll take that. Now, Don, I noticed in that first series, Penn State was doing a great job of changing their defense at the last second. And Jamel Holloway has had to go to audibles here. He'll call two plays and go to the line of scrimmage. Watch him change. Wing back right is Patrick Collins. Penn State's defense shows a lot of fronts. Lots of switching. No free tacklers. They don't know who to block sometimes. You know, Holloway is in deep trouble. Shane Conlon, All-American, and Michael Zordich, another All-American. Shoot the gap, and they stuff the quarterback for a 13-yard loss. Biggest way to beat the triple option or the wishbone is get to the exchange point. Shane Conlon on a blitz on the outside. Zordich, the man they call the hero, he's basically a strong safety right there at the exchange point. I asked Shane Cannon at practice yesterday, I said, are you apprehensive about playing a team like Oklahoma? He said, not at all. We're going to do our talking tomorrow night. They're playing tonight. Second down and 23 for the Sooners. For the run they go and get it out across the 20 as Lydell Carr, the 195-pound fullback, takes it straight ahead. In the Sugar Bowl, Miami of Florida, the one team that did beat Oklahoma this year, leads Tennessee 7 to nothing at New Orleans. First quarter score. Now freshman fullback comes in the game for the Sooners, Leon Perry, a 225-pound buster from Orlando. This is also a situation Oklahoma does not like. Third and long. Holloway completes just 41% of his passes. That's all, a 41% pass, and he throws infrequently. And not here. Not bad either. Janelle Holloway not down until he gets out. Across the 35-yard line of Oklahoma, 17-yard run on the play, but still short of a first down as Conlon made another tackle for Penn State. A design quarterback draw. College football, you must account for that quarterback. Jamel Holloway with four 100-yard rushing performances for the Oklahoma Sooners. Carries that ball rather loosely, but comes up about three yards, maybe two yards short of a first down. I think we've seen one thing early that Shane Conlon can play football. Yeah. He's been on every hit tonight. I think we knew that before. All-American outside backer at 6'3", 220. Winchester punting for a second time. Arking putt. Coach takes it at his 20. Gets a block. Not trying to outrun the pursuit. And Oklahoma looks good on special teams coverage as the knockdown is made. A five-yard loss on the return after a 42-yard punt. So the Nittany Lions have it back at their 15 when we come back to the 86 Orange Bowl. Penn State is using something a little bit different today. It's called a teleprinter. They utilized it earlier this year. It's a machine that uh, is able to help the Penn State offense or defense understand what's going on in the field. The coach is up in the booth. He'll draw some things up on a sheet of paper. It'll be sent down through this system. And already tonight, Coach Bob Phillips of the Penn State offense has changed the blocking system a little bit, sent it down here, and the coaching staff has utilized it with the players on the field. Hmm. The electronic aid. Yeah, high-tech football. Pound them out football. Penn State seven, Oklahoma nothing. Penn State second possession of the game. Schaefer gives off and the Sooners stop it cold. D.J. Dozier trying to hit straight ahead. Steve Bryan, a defensive tackle, made the stop along with Brian Bosworth. From the Sugar Bowl, underdog Tennessee has now tied Miami 7-7 in the second quarter. Miami certainly a team that could lay claim to the national championship depending on the outcome of tonight's game. Yeah, most people here in Miami have mixed emotions about watching this game or rooting for the Canes in New Orleans. The coaches poll, though, of UPI has Penn State with the ball number one in America and Oklahoma on defense number two. A showdown, a matchup of heavyweights. John Schaefer looking from inside his 10. Whoa, man, he almost gave it away. It was up for grabs at the Penn State 30. D.J. Dozier swinging out was the man on the ball from Penn State. Twice now is wrist an interception. He's thrown into coverage. Derek White was the man in coverage. Dozier didn't even turn his head around to look at the uh, quarterback. 
I thought he was open early. Schaefer waited a long time. Made about John Schaefer. He said, yeah, he doesn't complete a lot of passes for a high percentage, but we throw the ball down the field. Penn State likes to throw on first down. Schaefer's two for four so far for 26 yards. Third down and almost 10. Gets it to his tight end, Danidio, and the Sooners come calling on him right at the 16-yard line. So now Penn State has to punt the ball for a first time, and Oklahoma could get excellent field position. Oh, and that's great discipline, too, by Steve Bryan and Derek White. When you lock onto a receiver, a lot of times as a defensive player, you can be decoyed. Bryant stayed in his pass rush lane. Derek stayed with his coverage. Derek White, very, very little gain on that tight end screen. John Bruno, a standout punter, hits the ball well downfield for Penn State. Derek Shepard at his 42. And Shepard gets his lateral. Is it clean? It appears to be as the ball is advanced now down close to the 45-yard line of Penn State. A 12-yard return took two players to do it. Everybody loves a gambler though he loses. That time Oklahoma made it work. We'll be back with the Sooners on offense after this. Penn State drove 47 yards on its opening possession and took it into the end zone on a crash in by fullback Manoa. And now the Nittany Lions hold a 7-0 lead, but Oklahoma has its best field position. They're starting this drive after a Penn State punt at the 46-yard line of the Nittany Lions. And I think the thing Oklahoma is trying to do is figure out what changes Penn State is making just before the snap of the ball. They're trying to confuse Jamel Holloway, doing a pretty good job. Pitch back, ball on the field, and doing a good job covering it is Spencer Tillman. Looking at the Penn State defense, a big tough nose tackle, Mike Russo. Tim Johnson, next to him, a 250 pounder from Sarasota, Florida. Bob White, a very fast defensive end. Shane Conlon, we've seen make a lot of plays already in this game, an All American at outside linebacker. On the other side is Don Graham. Inside backers are smaller, but they're very fast. And Trey Bauer and Rogers Alexander. First and uh, second down and about 12 now for the Sooners. Damon Stell is out as a flanker as they go to the fullback. Lydell Carr gets ahead to the 45 yard line. It'll be third and nine. There's Trey Bauer from Paramus, New Jersey, a junior just 212. Rogers Alexander's 210. These both great open field tacklers. Duffy Cobbs at one corner. Lance Hamilton gained some All American honors at the other. Ray Isom, a top notch free safety and the hero back, the rover Michael Zordich. Last time in long yardage now. Jamel Holloway ran the quarterback draw. Holloway on third and nine. Loops it out. He's got his big tight end, Keith Jackson, who is chopped by Ray Isom, but inside the 35-yard line of Penn State, a 13-yard gain for the Sooners, and they have a first down. Here's Bob Greasy. Don, here's Jackson right here. He's going to come across the field, but the thing you're going to notice about Holloway is his ability to scramble around in the back of the pocket. Linebacker is blitzing up the middle. Jackson delays a second. A crossing pattern. Try to scrape your man off on the other defensive back. Well, first Oklahoma first down. Penn State leads in the first quarter seven to nothing. Right up power as the Sooners now start to gear up. Offense in sync as they run it down to the 22 yard line of Penn State. Again Ray Isom made the tackle. When you defense the wishbone, what you have to do is play very disciplined defense. You have an assignment. There's a man that's to cover the fullback, to cover the quarterback, and the pitch man. And each time that someone breaks a defensive assignment, you have a run like that for almost 10 yards. In the seven games since Jamel Holloway's taken over as quarterback of Oklahoma, they've averaged 38 points a game. And as we pointed out earlier, allowing just 8.5, but Penn State with 3.08 to play in the first quarter has a 7-0 lead. That's the Boz here, Chris, they call that. You'll see those all over Oklahoma. Puts that helmet on. He, he can go. Best linebacker in America in one pole. Got the Buckus Award. Ah, breaking tackle. Some excellent blocking by the offensive front of the Sooners. Very quickly off the ball was Yules, the center. For Aaron Anthony. 
Anthony Phillips blasting out. Now, Don, you see in the first two series by the Oklahoma Sooners, they tried to get to the corner and they lost yardage. Now they're going almost exclusively to the fullback, six yards a carry. Barry Switzer told me earlier in the week this is a high per carry average offense. We got to have around six yards each time. Second and less than three. Lydell Carr again the first back up the full back and Russo grabbed him wrestled him down at about the 13 yard line. It'll be close to a first down. One of the matchups we want to play pay close attention to all evening is Rick Ewells the center against Mike Russo the nose tackle. Ewells has got to handle that guy. Oh my goodness. Russo throws him out of the way there to make the tackle for a very little game. Penn State Trump has not allowed a point in the first quarter in its last six games. Sooner shut out so far but challenging. 150 to go first quarter. Look at him. Spencer Tillman got the call. Bob White got him. We'll see if he got there. One of the things you got to like about this Penn State defense is they attack the line of scrimmage all individually great tacklers even the defensive backs as the Oklahoma Sooners pick up the first down. Paterno with great confidence in that defense as long as they attack that neutral zone that one foot on either side of the football Paterno will be happy regardless of the outcome. Lydell Carr has been the hub of the running game so far. Six carries 32 yards the rest of the team five carries minus three yards. Game clock ticking down to 120 to go in the first quarter. Penn State 7 Oklahoma nothing. Penalty markers all over the field. Stop play. The Sooners are a team with phenomenal speed on both sides of the ball. Joe Paterno says he is the Penn State team hasn't met a quicker ball club all year. One of the problems you have when you lay off for five maybe six weeks is you have some penalties and Barry Switzer is saying oh not a penalty. Come on. But that happens. Misfire across the Sooners five yards. The ball is set back to their 17 yard line. The 17 yard line of Penn State. It's 15 to go. First and 15. I'd look for Keith Jackson here. He's their big play guy. Reverses. This is where they like him. He's a line to the right. 88. Keith Jackson. They like Carr again. He didn't get there. Rogers Alexander inside linebacker beat the block and knocked down the carrier and so Penn State holds on first down it'll be second down now and long yardage for the Oklahoma Sooners just inside the 15 yard line of Penn State. One of the things you try to do against the wishbone is at least keep it on the line of scrimmage. If you can go through the blocks and not run around the blocks. And then you have a chance to stop the wishbone at the line of scrimmage. Rogers Alexander, who seems to be everywhere, along with Shane Conlon making tackles. Good job there. This is the ninth play of the drive. Penn State leads seven nothing. Holloway, Conlon trying to run him down. So is Zordich, and Zordich is going to get him. Takes him out of field goal range too, Don. Also a penalty marker down. Jamel Holloway's fast. At 175 pounds at 220, looks like Conlon and Zordich are just as quick. But Don, there's a point where a quarterback has to realize this is a bad play. Face mask against the defense. Whoa. Holloway's trying to do too much. Sometimes when it's not there, just accept that, go back to the huddle and take the next play. Watch Conlon. 220 pounds, he's standing outside. He's got great speed for a guy his size. And look at him. They're just hemming him in, just keeping containment so he can't turn around and go back the other way. Get a look now at the face mask with the reverse angle. Zordis comes in, grabbing for whatever he can get. Gets the face mask and the head must follow. He certainly holds that ball rather loosely, though, as well as Penn State comes up with turnovers. They've gotten 17 more turnovers than they've given up in this season. So now Holloway's going to have to protect that ball a little better. Penn State, a defense tough, smart, and well coordinated, but a mistake there negates a 13 yard knockdown for a loss. Against the defense, they're saying the that's intentional. The from the basic spot to the previous I spot. With that. Still second down. 
I think Zordas just grabbed whatever was out there yeah. as he reached in, but it gives a big assist to the Sooner offense now, puts them right back in position. Second down and seven coming up. From the 10 yard line of Penn State. 15 seconds to go in the first quarter, the Nittany Lions lead 7 0. Leon Perry, the freshman fullback, driving straight ahead. That'll bring up third down in about 4 5. That's going to do it for the first quarter of the 1986 Orange Bowl. So the Sooners of Barry Switzer are challenging, but after 15 minutes, Penn State is a 7 0 leader. Bob Trumpy, this is Don Crickey back at the Orange Bowl. Our yards are even through the first quarter, but not the score. Penn State's a 7 0 leader. Uh, Don, those 40 yards rushing by the Sooners, primarily Lydell Carr. Jamel Holloway has lost yards. Uh, Carr's got 35 of the 40 yards rushing by the Oklahoma Sooners so far. They're going with the blast off offensive line. Two tight ends in Jackson and Darren Berryhill. Third down four for Oklahoma. Can't play the drive. It's been lunchtime for Jamel Holloway. He's trying to do too much. Pete Giftopoulos on the tackle along with Rogers Alexander. That's another loss of four yards. Now, remind you that Jamel Holloway is only 18 years old. Ray Isom on the deck here of the Orange Bowl with an injury, but I, I personally think that Jamel Holloway is trying to do too much. Player down for Penn State, Ray Isom. Their fine free safety is down being looked at. Coach Switzer looking to make some adjustments on the sideline with his offense as on fourth down the field goal unit comes out 14 47 to play in the first half. And Penn State scoring on its opening drive continues to hold to a seven to nothing lead. Coach Barry Switzer in his 13th year as head coach of the Sooners his teams over the years have won 83 percent of their games. Next to him, his freshman quarterback, Jamel Holloway, who has been stuffed on his option runs. And now on fourth down, the Sooners go to a field goal. Ready to try it is Tim Lasher. The 26-yard attempt. 20, he drills it up, and it looks good. It is, and the Sooners are on the board with 14.35 to play in the first half. But the tension eases a bit, but the Sooners, heavily favored, still trail number one Penn State. It's now a 7-3 to three game. Don, I want to remind you of a comment that Joe Paterno made to us yesterday. He said, as the game goes on when you play a wishbone team, you defense it better. Yep. Through this first quarter, Penn State has done an outstanding job of defensing this wishbone. That's Isom on the sideline having his knee checked. We'll give you an injury report as soon as we possibly can. Ray Isom, a junior free safety from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, an anchor in the defense. He can't come back. It'll be a big blow. On Saturday, the American Conference playoff game between the Browns and the Dolphins will be here at the Orange Bowl. Miami comes in with a big head of steam, rolled in the late part of the season. And then on Sunday, it's the Patriots and the Raiders from Los Angeles, all on NBC Sports. Very warm night, Miami, Florida. A shirt sleeve Joe Paterno in his 20th year as head coach at Penn State. A lot of people don't realize Trump that he spent 16 years prior to that as an assistant coach at Penn State. He's been there 36 years. And he doesn't have a gray hair. He must really like what he does. 59 years old. He's one of the oldest head coaches in the country. Where's his success well and right now it's the Nittany Lions returning the kickoff. Jim Coates is drilled at the 15 yard line. David Vickers popped him. Number 10 for the Sooners. John Schaefer brings out the Penn State offense. Penn State comes into this averaging 24 points a game, allowing less than 12. Dick McPherson, the Syracuse head coach, calls the Penn State offense a no-risk offense, an <laughs> offense that won't beat itself. <laughs> But the Nittany Lions kill the opposition in their mistakes. 7 3 Penn State. Incomplete. Eric Hamilton almost had his third catch as John Schaefer was hit and hard by a blitzing linebacker, Daryl Reed. Second and 
Penn State doing an awful lot of rolling out. And Schaefer has had problems just standing back in the pocket throwing it. Reed almost gets him along with Tupper. And he does a good job getting the ball off. And even though it's incomplete, he saves the sack. And that All-American nose tackle, Tony Casillas, a wrecking ball in the middle, busting right up the middle on each play. Watch him, 92 for Oklahoma. D.J. Dozier took some hard hits. Jeff Tupper got the first shot on as the Sooners swarmed to the ball on second and ten. A knockdown for no gain. Third and ten, Penn State. To remind our fans tonight, this uh, Oklahoma defense is first in total pass defense, second in rushing and scoring defense, and that's the best ranking in the history of the NCAA. 13.50 to play, first half. Clock is running here at the 1986 Orange Bowl. Number one, Penn State with a 7-3 lead. Schaefer on third and ten. Ray Roundtree was going for the ball, but as you see, it was well overthrown. Now for an update on the condition of Ray Ison. Let's go down to Jimmy Sepulveda. This will be relatively not serious. And he will be fine to come back into the football game. They're taping that left knee. Ray Ison will return to the lineup in the next series for Penn State's defense. Don? Thank you, Jimmy. That's good news for yes. the Nittany Lions. Oklahoma coaches, after looking at a lot of film, say Ison is really a key and underrated player on this Penn State defense. Big hitter. Now the Sooners will get it back again in good field position. Derek Shepard is the deep man. Bruno hits another big punt downfield. Shepard back at his 39. Mm. And a penalty marker comes in after he was down. It was a 46-yard punt by number 11, John Bruno, and a four-yard return. When you speak with Joe Paterno about priorities for his football team, he says you win with defense, special teams, and offense in that order. They won't beat themselves with offensive mistakes, or not often. These two teams could contend for a national championship again next year. They're mainly underclassmen, both of them. Personal foul call against the Sooners, so that good field position is quickly lost on a yellow flag. Shepard on the return. It looks like it was a pair of fists right to the face by an Oklahoma Sooner that cost them 15 yards. The Nittany Lions now see the yardage marked off against Oklahoma. Oh, they're saying that that's after the player was down. They established the point where he hit the ground. Then they tacked the 15 yards back. First and 25 now for Oklahoma. That's expensive. We'll be back in a moment. The 1986 Orange Bowl is brought to you by Plymouth, division of Chrysler Corporation. Plymouth, the pride is back, born in America again. By Teneco, building on quality. And by Federal Express, why fool around with anyone else? Thirteen twenty-four to play in the first half. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy, Bob Greasy, and Jimmy Cephalo at the 1986 Orange Bowl. Number two, Oklahoma, favored by over a touchdown in some estimations, trailing seven to three with the ball. Spencer Tillman. Showing that breakaway speed, the Oklahoma backs breaking like quarter horses at the snap of the ball, break off a 12-yard gainer. They have not gotten a lot of yardage outside. Sooners preferring to go inside. Try to get everybody sunk down in there and then they'll try to break one of these real quick kids to the outside. I noticed that time Ewell's had a great deal of trouble with Russo, the center for Oklahoma. Number 52, the nose tackle for Penn State, 67. Second and 14 now for the Sooners. Okay. Jamel Holloway is liable to get out of this game with his uniform and his life and little else. Here's Bob Greasy. 
reasons that Holloway is not having such good luck is Shane Conlon right here as a linebacker, and he is eyeballing the quarterback. Quarterback goes to the right side, he goes right. Quarterback goes left, he goes left. A little bit different style of defense than they're normally used to seeing. Holloway. He's eyeballing him right, left, wherever he goes. Janelle Holloway, the leading rusher for Oklahoma, almost five and a half a carry, has minus eight on five rushes. Home run ball. Jackson has it. The All-American tight end is going in, and Oklahoma takes the lead on a 71-yard touchdown play. Jackson ran that pattern over a backup safety. Ray Isom still on the bench having his knee tape. Ray Bookman was the man beaten. There was also an awful big block by Damon Stell right at the end of that play. That allowed Keith Jackson. Look, Joe is saying, that's all right. Don't settle down. We're all right. Penn State. Gives up two big touchdowns in a row. They won't be out of this. They fight it out right to the final gun, and this one's got a long way to go. And the Sooners look sharp. Get a big scoring play. Jackson's longest reception of this year. He's run one 88 yards for a touchdown. Did that against Nebraska. You can see they catch him in a blitz. Single coverage down the field. Once again, it's Bookman, 26 with the coverage. There's the block by Stell. E. Jackson, a gifted athlete, just a sophomore, big, fast, and an excellent blocker. Well, they're getting the boys off the field out there celebrating before a marker went down. E. Jackson, a big, pleasant, engaging young man from Little Rock, Arkansas, on the payoff end of a 71-yard touchdown pass play. He openly predicted in the week that Oklahoma was going to win by seven. Right now, they've come from behind to lead by three. As the kickoff is downed in the end zone by Coates, it'll come out to the Penn State 20. Here's the touchdown play again, Bob. The end of it, Keith Jackson, an excellent receiver. You see how steady his head is. Holloway, we expected to be the big rusher tonight. He's got five carries for minus eight yards, but he's two for two throwing it, Don. 84 yards and a touchdown. Both throws to Keith Jackson. So with 12.26 to go now in the first half, Oklahoma has the lead for the first time. Don, that's the longest pass play against the Penn State Nittany Lions so far in 1980. Ivan Keith Jackson celebrates his own way. Moment of thanks for Jackson right there on the promised land, the end zone. Here's a hand up now. Dozier runs the ball. He's stuffed at the 19-yard line. Big plays like that pick up a defense, too. Kevin Murphy on the tackle. That time, the Oklahoma defense had captured the line of scrimmage. No place for Dozier to run. And everything it was cracked up to be. Penn State unbeaten, the longest winning streak in America, 11 straight. They Whoa. got them all this year. Coming out now with a second down and over 10 play from just inside their 20. John Schaefer, a 45% passer, lost the ball. Is it a fumble over the arm forward? It was forward. Rolled an incomplete pass. We've seen a decided change in old Mo in this game, though. Steve Bryan on the sack. And Penn State is certainly slowed down here. Of course, the Oklahoma defense has turned it up a notch. You see Reed 40 on the pass rush. Schaefer holds the ball too long. There's no question he holds the ball too long. The uh, defensive backs of the of the Oklahoma Sooners are doing an excellent job of chucking the wide receivers, rerouting them down the field, and that's making John Schaefer wait that split second longer. Nittany Lions have been shut down in their last eight plays. Now comes third down and just over 10 for Penn State, failing 10-7 early in the second quarter. Manoa. And Crimson and Cream comes calling on Manoa. The man who scored the first touchdown of the game is knocked down by Bosworth. Surprising, surprising call. Manoa is not one of the fastest guys on the team. Here's Bosworth, 44, tackling his like number. Why would you give a 
draw play to one of the slowest running backs you have on the team. Now they're going to rethink that. Next possession right now, Derek Shepard has the ball for Oklahoma. Bouncing off people and bouncing the wrong way for the Sooners. He's thrown down back inside his 35. The numbers are changing at the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans where Tennessee is the underdog, but the Volunteers hold a 14-7 lead over the Miami Hurricanes. Miami, second in one poll, fourth in another. Penn State now trailing Oklahoma and will be back. Some interesting developments on this final night of the college football season. Tennessee beating Miami at the moment. It's still early, Trump, but Oklahoma winning here in line if they can hold on to win the national championship. Well, Penn State wants to make that a ridiculous argument, though. They only trail by three points, and to this point in the ballgame, it's not going Oklahoma's way. They lead. But you're not going to Oklahoma's not going to win by completing 84 yard passes for touchdowns. It just doesn't happen that way. Well, it worked once for 71. But for the most part, Holloway's been running for his life. This time he gives up to the fullback again who takes it out on a first down carry for only two yards. Pete Kirkendall that time at nose tackle did an excellent job. Well, that match up the center for Oklahoma Ewells against the nose tackles of the Penn State Nittany Lions is a big factor in this ball game and I think one of the main reasons Oklahoma is not getting much yardage. Number one but down by three at the moment. Second down a long seven for the Sooners. Talking yesterday what do we look for in the long yardage plays they said usually something like third and eight look for a run. Yeah. I'm going to try this name. This is Palomalu on the nose, and he's matched up with Ewells, and he's handling the center. And there's Palomalu to make the tackle. I'm so proud of myself. His brother is Kennedy Pola. He left the Malu, fullback for Southern California. But he's changing it. Okay. Look at that. The Sooners, after hitting the big play, their last possession, 71 yards for a touchdown. Holloway to Jackson. Have it again. And again, first back through gets the ball as Holloway simplifies the offense and the spread outs on the option. He's been getting busted a lot as the game clock is now down to 940 and running in the first half and the Sooners coming from behind lead 10 to 7. Rogers Alexander on the tackle. Fourth and short. Punter comes out. Penn State's done the job again. Mike Winchester in for his third punt of the night for the Sooners. And Coates is back. Jim Coates for the Nittany Lions inside his 20. He was a walk on. He had a full scholarship this year as a sophomore. He made a big contribution to Penn State. Winchester hits it well. He takes a long time getting into it. And Coates with a fair catch gives the Penn State Nittany Lions the ball, but deep in their own end, they'll start from their 14 yard line with 9.02 to play in the first half. And the Sooners in the lead by three. Earlier we talked about that machine, the teleprinter that the Penn State the coaching staff is utilizing, and here's a copy of that machine. They've drawn up some of the wishbone attack of the Oklahoma Sooners, and they have made a couple of changes to try to shut down the pitch, as you see up here in this corner. So the uh, Penn State coaching staff is utilizing this machine, and we'll see if it works to try to shut down that Oklahoma offense. Don? Thank you, Jimmy. Those X's and O's work if some of the X's are people like Keith Jackson. Huh? <laughs> That's true. That's true. 71-yard touchdown reception. First and ten, Penn State. John Schaefer on a screen goes to B.J. Dozier, but the Sooners are right there. A big defensive play by a freshman cornerback, Derek White. Watch Tony Casillas busting through. Nose tackle, he's all over the field. He's matched against Scott Radisick, but defensive players never quit until that whistle blows one of the problems Penn State's having done so far in this ball game they're averaging less than two yards per play on first down big Tony's a tough guy they say the first rattle they gave Tony when he's a baby to play with still had the snake attached to it <laughs> from Tosa second down and 17 now 
Big strike. Back to the 23. Close to a first down, but not there. It'll be third and short for Penn State. Dean Demidio, the tight end, got open. Ricky Dixon knocked him down. A gain of 15 on the play. Good projection that time for Schaefer to set up. Wait for that tight end to clear through the zone. You'll see Demidio come right behind Bosworth. Bosworth appears to pick him up, then drop him. And you need good time, good protection for the quarterback to make sure that completion is there. And an excellent tackle by Dixon. First half moving right along, 7.35 to play in it. At the moment of the Sugar Bowl, Tennessee is ahead of favored Miami, 14-7. Oklahoma, the favorite, is leading number one ranked Penn State, 10-7 here. Third yard. Boomback takes it up and gets the first down for Penn State out to the 25. Steve Smith, head down, hits in. The ugly part of playing nose tackle is when you get in short yardage situations, people come from every direction. Casillas that time stands the center up pretty well, doesn't do a bad job at all. It's Rob Smith in there at center, runs around the block, and assist on the tackle on Steve Smith, but Penn State still gets the first down. There he is, the wrecking ball in the middle for the Sooners, Tony Casillas. Oklahoma has now outscored its opponents in the second quarter over the season, 140 to 10. Intercepted by Sonny Brown. Inside the 30, not done yet. Inside the 15-yard line of Penn State. So Schaefer, whose throws were close to being picked off earlier, gets one up, and Sonny Brown takes it back 22 yards, and now Oklahoma's in good position with a first down. Right here, you're going to drop straight back. The receiver is going to come down and run a curl, but these linebackers are going to drop in here, and that is why the ball is going to be thrown high to try and get it over the linebackers dropping back, and Brown seeing it all the way takes the overthrow and runs it back. Bob, let me ask you, is he telegraphing his throws? You watched him work out a lot. There seems to be a lot of people around the area every time he goes. I just don't think he's that good of a thrower, Don. I mean, you've already uh, hit on it. He's just throwing into a lot of uh, situations, and the law of averages caught up with him that time. Now, Oklahoma goes to the run and takes it inside the 15-yard line. Leon Perry, the freshman fullback, Got one tough yard down to the 14. Don, let me make a comment on that last interception. Bob, would you not agree? The receiver didn't stop. He kept fading to the inside. Schaefer didn't have much choice but to throw it in there. He couldn't throw it at the receiver. He had to throw it over the linebacker. Barry Switzer looking on after that disappointing upset loss a year ago to Washington in the Orange Bowl. Shane Camlin is stuck on Jamel Holloway at eye contact, and wherever he goes, Conlon's right with him, making it a knockdown for no gain on the play. Actually, a loss of a yard. It'll be third and ten. Don, on that, in this matchup between Holloway and Conlon, as Bob Greasy said, Conlon following Holloway everywhere he goes. I think in a, in a 40 yard dash, I take Conlon. Holloway is not that fast. He's very quick, but he's not that fast. We've been around a lot of football players, and I've never been around one more anxious to play a game than Shane Conlon. He just couldn't wait any longer. Holloway, end zone, man's open, lost ball. Coming off the flank was Lee Morris, left to right. Stick put on him by Isom, who's back in, apparently in good health after that brief trouble with a knee. And it's a field goal try now for Oklahoma. I'll tell you one thing, the next time they call this play, Lee Morris is going to remember that hit. Take shorter steps going through the middle there. Isom put him right on the turf. Sonny Brown's the holder. Lasher hit earlier. This is a 31 yard attempt coming up. 524 to play in the first half and Oklahoma looking to extend its lead to 13 to 7. It's like the Sooners do. So Tim Lasher. Now hitting on 17 of 23 this season, and the Sooners lead by six. Mel Holloway was getting gobbled up early by the Penn State defense, but he got it cooking. The big strike of this game, his 71-yard pass to tight end Keith Jackson for the touchdown that got Oklahoma right back in the game. And now they have, with that lead they got in the touchdown, have extended it to 13-7. to Oklahoma 
dominant in the second quarter. They've outscored their opposition this year 143 points to 10 in the second quarter. Mm. Todd Thompson kicks up for the Sooners. Jimmy Coates going to bring it back. And gets it across the 20 to the 23. 22 yard return. Here's that pass reception over the middle. And you can see the fake to the fullback on the first option of the triple option. And this hit by Ray Isom. There's no question that receiver Lee Morris will think about that for a while. Next time he runs that pattern, he may be a little slow getting there. So the ball out to the 23 yard line with 516 to go in the first half. The biggest and most spectacular halftime show in college football every year at the Orange Bowl is coming up as right now the Lions of Penn State go to the run and don't get much as a 235 pound fullback Steve Smith is knocked down. And one thing about this Penn State offense they don't score a lot of points and they don't drive the length of the field very often. Look at the field position. Best 38 and they score the rest nothing. John Schaefer on a rollout blitz against him and they get him at the 19 yard line. Look at the speed of Troy Johnson a sophomore defensive end but they're really stand up linebackers on the outside. It's essentially a 3 4 defense yes. at Oklahoma play. You're absolutely right. So does Penn State. But he does an excellent job of keeping containment. This is a design rollout and all he's trying to do is buy time. But Troy Johnson keeps that containment. That is, he stays outside of the quarterback. If he turns up, it's someone else's responsibility to make the tackle. He does his job, gets a sack, minus seven yards. As soon as he saw Schaefer setting up to throw, about five quick steps and he was on him. And now it's going to be third down and 13 for Penn State. Picked off again. Tony Rayburn. All the way down inside the 10 yard line. So Schaefer on consecutive misfires in the last two possessions. And a 34 yard return by Tony Rayburn. And Oklahoma threatening to go in again before halftime. Ball was intended for running back David Clark. You'll see this ball tip. I don't understand why John Schaefer is throwing into coverage. There's one man, there's two men. And his last two completions, Don, have been to the other guys. Is that you call that Trump room service for Tony that's, Rayburn? That's room service. Yes, sir. Just what I ordered. <laughs> right in his hands. And with 3.57 to go in the first half, the Sooners going first and goal. Look at that ball. Free ball. It looks like Holloway got it. And State, a team on defense loaded with high-impact tacklers who hunt the ball. They knocked it free that time. The hit on the play made by Tim Johnson on freshman Anthony Stafford. Well, this is certainly what Joe Paterno did not want. Last time, Oklahoma had less than half the field to drive for a score. This time, drive starts at Penn State's 14-yard line. That's not good to put a potent offense down here on your goal line all night long. 13-7, Sooners and Crimson and Cream lead the game and go to the run now as they take it down inside the 10-yard line on a second and goal from the 14. Ray Bauer made the stop inside. Lydell Carr taking it straight ahead. He's the second leading rusher, a sophomore fullback. Not big as fullbacks go, about 200. You don't really have to be big in the wishbone, though, Don. You're not, you need to be quick. He's only about three and a half yards from the football. When you look at the lineup of that wishbone, none of those running backs tip you where they're going. They all look exactly the same. Penn State coaches are preached. Discipline in defending the wishbone. It's an offense predicated on deception. That time, a quick hit. Again, they go to Lydell Carr. He's down inside the five yard line. Halftime. Tennessee, a decided underdog in the Sugar Bowl, now leading at halftime 14 to 7 over Miami. We're at the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida, a game that for the last five years has decided college football's national championship. And again this year, a matchup of the game's heavyweights, a showdown between number one Penn State and number two Oklahoma. Penn State led early, then Oklahoma rallied, getting the big plan, a 71-yard touchdown pass to All-American tight end Keith Jackson to take the lead. 
And since then the Sooners have extended it to 13 to 7 after Penn State jumped out to a 7 nothing first quarter lead. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy Bob Greasy and Jimmy Cephalo. The Orange Bowl sold out on a very warm night in southern Florida. And that could take a toll as the game wears on. Very humid. 21 yard field goal by Lasher. And Lasher a guy who gets it done three for three on field goals and the Sooners all of a sudden have opened up a 16 to 7 lead. Oklahoma kicks it off after Winchester's third straight field goal and here comes Penn State Blair Thomas running the ball back crosses the 20 and gets out to the 28 yard line. 144 to go in the first half. Back to Jimmy Cephalo on the sideline. Don, the difference is I had to change headsets. It was so loud during the first quarter, I couldn't hear Don here. But now with the change of momentum and score, behind the Penn State bench, it is very, very quiet. A big difference in shift in the stadium and on the field. Don? You and Greasy and the Dolphins used to crank up some noise here over the years. <laughs> and will again Saturday, will the Dolphins, when they meet the Cleveland Browns. 144 to go in the first half. Sooners 16. The Nittany Lions of Penn State, number one in the country and trailing 16 to 7. Manoa, he's big and he's fast. But it might be too little too late with time running down to go straight up the gut. 135 to play in the half. Ryan Bosworth, that linebacker who hunts him down sideline to sideline, makes another stop for the Sooners. Second and four. Schaefer having a problem getting the ball to his receivers and getting it to some Sooners inadvertently. Yeah, Don, he's got to square his shoulders. When he wanted to throw out to Cyberling, he was open. All he's got to do is get the ball to him, but he kept his feet going down the field and then tried to throw across his body. That's basic fundamentals for a quarterback. You got to make your feet like a turret. And as you're going to throw out to the flat, turn your feet that way. Sounds good to me. Let's hope so. Five for 13 is John Schaefer throwing the ball for 37 yards. Been intercepted twice. Out of Moeller High in Cincinnati. On the run, he throws it away. Stops the clock with 113 to go. The halftime show, Disney World and the Living Seas here at the Orange Bowl in Miami as the Nittany Lions who got Took, won the opening flip, elected to kick off, stuffed the Sooner wishbone, and then took it right through him down the field, scoring on a short touchdown plunge by Tim Manoa. But since then, the Sooners have gotten right back in it and moved out to a 16 to 7 lead. Touchdown, a long one and three field goals. Short punt by Bruno. The Sooners let it hop. And Oklahoma probably will look to run the clock out now. Take the winnings to the locker room with 102 to go. A 53-yard punt with the roll. Barry Switzer a lot more animated now. He was like a little bit shell-shocked early in the game when the Nittany Lions went right through his number one defense. Uh, his young quarterback there, Jamel Holloway, certainly had better days to this point and better halves. You can see their possessions. The only touchdown. The 71 yard pass reception by Keith Jackson. And here's an, another interesting thing of the 21 running plays that Oklahoma's had in this first half. 12 have gone to the fullback. They can't get the second and third options of the triple option free. Fullback's been the guy. Up back is Leon Perry now. And Janelle Holloway calls his own number. You're right, Don. They're happy to go in at halftime, leading 16 to 7. We were mentioning earlier, Barry Switzer said when it comes to offense, he likes to see his team pass in pregame warmups. I think Penn State was looking for that because they sure didn't read the tight end deep. He just blew on yeah. by, and Jackson was in the end zone on a 71 yard touchdown pass play. Don, in 1985, this Oklahoma Sooner offense averaged 68 rushes per ball game. Most teams don't get 68 plays. Right now the Sooners going into alignment at their leisure holding to a 16 to 7 lead with 22 seconds to play in the first half. People leaving early. Tim Johnson busted through. Penalty markers go down as the clock is stopped now 22 seconds to play in the first half. 
Penn State number one in all the polls but all the odds makers favored high scoring Oklahoma coming in. The Sooners big fast and confident and they'll tell you they're confident. Uh, Don, that was interesting we had Mark Hudson against Tim Johnson. They were kind of pointing fingers at each other. That should be our isolate just to see on this next play what they do even though there is nothing at stake here. One will try to show the other one don't mess with me son. And we should also keep in mind Trump that in their 11 wins this season the Nittany Lions have come from behind six times to win five times at halftime they were behind. This is a team with a great deal of character. 22 seconds left and Penn State calls a timeout. So we'll be back right after this. The battle of the polls the Associated Press poll and the UPI coaches poll both with Penn State number one in America Miami number two in the AP writers and broadcasters poll Oklahoma number two in the coaches poll Iowa's out of the picture now as far as any contention for national championship they were beaten soundly in the Rose Bowl today UCLA winning 45 to 28 in a game broadcast here on NBC Sports in Miami. Intending for a national title depending on the outcome of this game and its own in the Sugar Bowl with Tennessee right now Miami is trailing Tennessee at halftime 14 to 7. 16 to 7 the score here Oklahoma rallying from a 7 nothing first quarter deficit scoring 16 unanswered points in the second quarter as with 18 seconds to play in the half the clock winds down and it's going to wind out now they're going to call another timeout. Last time they had a snap you saw defensive lineman from Penn State jump across the line at Mark Hudson he tried this time to make up for it, but there was nobody there I'm looking for somebody to hit Joe Paterno as you know Trump <laughs> feels good about coming to the Orange Bowl he's been here with Penn State teams three previous times each time they won in 69 70 and 74 and each time they completed an unbeaten season with a victory in the Orange Bowl. But were never accorded a national yeah. championship. Isn't the only, that something? Only official one they got was after they beat Georgia in the Sugar Bowl in '82. They beat Herschel Walker in Georgia in the Sugar Bowl in '82 and did an outstanding defensive job. Well, Joe Paterno's now got an interesting choice to start out the second half. He's trailing 16 to 7, but field position for the Penn State offense is, is absolutely critical to its success. So now trailing 16 to 7 do you take the ball and you have that option if you're Penn State or do you once again kick it off hope that your defense can stop Oklahoma and you have better field position the next time, the first time your offense gets the ball. If he should decide to change pitchers down the line it's unlikely he would until late in the game but if he should his backup Matt Kisner that goes into playing time Oklahoma gives up the ball nine seconds to go in the first half. And the impact tackling of Penn State makes something big happen before halftime. Well, that's a dumb play. It looked to me like they were going to throw the ball way down the field. If you simply take the ball and fall on it, the half ends and it's over with. This is exactly what Penn State was looking for. Switzer is looking for Holloway. <laughs> He's running around. Watch. I said earlier, he's got to protect the ball, hold it a little better with two hands. Look at the way he's running. He's got it hanging out there. He finally puts two hands on it, but not strong. Knocked away. Penn State's going to get three points. And points at the end of a half or the beginning of the half are the most critical points of a game, especially in a bowl game like this. Just gave Penn State life. Penn State, an opportunistic team, making a big play on defense with nine seconds to play in the half. Ball at the 11 yard line of Oklahoma Sooners in the late 16 to 7. We'll hear from Paterno just before halftime. Right now Joe Paterno is going to the playbook and he's just sent one in. Yeah I'll tell you what those timeouts he took. Pretty good decisions right. Let the other team make a mistake. Joe's going to step by and talk to Jim Cephalo just before he goes to the locker room. But right now nine seconds left. First half. Penn State trailing 16 to 7. Schaefer wisely throws it away as the Sooners cover very well. Don, it appears to me that he locks on to receivers out of the backfield. Dozier is covered and covered completely, and still he tried to throw it to him. So well, they're going to settle for the three points. He didn't look any other place but the DJ Dozier out of the backfield. Zone coverage by Oklahoma. Nobody to throw it to. 
in his own color jersey. It's basically a wasted play. Penn State's kicking game excels. Massimo Manka done a big job booting field goals for the Nittany Lions. This is a 27 yarder. That'll bring them to within six and does. So with one second to play in the first half, the Penn State defense gets the ball and Manka puts it through the upsides two plays later. And Penn State is right back in the hunt, trailing 16 to 10. They'll kick it off with a second to play. Mock is a long range booter, something to keep in mind as this game goes tight down towards the end. He's three for four from outside the 50 yard line this year, born in Sardinia. This is a good spot for Oklahoma to use whatever trick kickoff return they might have. Reverse, pass, one second left. All the coaches we talked to, Trump, seem to feel the longer Penn State stayed in the game, the better the chance they'd have to win. Oh, they're playing it right so far, shutting down the wishbone. If it's close at the end, there's a pretty good chance Penn State's going to win it. They have that history. Penn State has a history of blowing teams out. They like to score in their first three possessions. Penn State's been tough in the last three games, too. They've routed their last three opponents. Yeah, outscored them 98 to 16. Cincinnati, Notre Dame, and Pittsburgh. Ball is down on the kickoff. The first half ends. And State's big following here. 15,000 in to support the Nittany Lions in the Keystone State. As Penn State goes to the locker room, trailing the Sooners 16 to 10. Now down to Jimmy Cephalo. Joe, you utilize the timeout to the end of the half, and it works in your favor. Yeah, well, that was a big break for us because we needed a little lift, and fortunately, we get to receive the ball the second half. And then I think we've got to start putting some things together. We're jumping all over the place. We don't know what we're doing right now. Uh, Oklahoma is very strong and very quick, and we're just, we got to settle down and do a couple of things and start doing them better, get a drive together, and we'll be okay. Our defense is playing awfully well. They've been on the field quite often during the second quarter. They seem to be a little tired. Well, we've played, we've played some second kids in there. We've, so we have enough kids. We have, we're too deep defensively. That doesn't worry me so much. I think we just got to, you know, careless interceptions and that kind of stuff. You can't beat a team like Oklahoma with that kind of stuff. Thanks, Scott. Okay. Don? They're pretty good, though, when they go to the drawing board. Joe Paterno in Penn State is Barry Switzer takes his Sooners to the locker room, holding to a 16 to 10 lead. The most spectacular halftime show in college football is coming up from the Orange Bowl. Miami, Florida, city of light on January 1, 1986, with college football's national championship game probably being played right now because Tennessee is belting Miami right out of contention. Iowa's already gone having lost to UCLA in the Rose Bowl. And here at the Orange Bowl, it is the Oklahoma Sooners leading the Nittany Lions of Penn State 16 to 10. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy and Bob Greasy. Coach Trumpy, what is your suggestions to the Sooners and the Nittany Lions at halftime? Well, first of all, Joe Paterno, I think, uh, answered our question that the beginning of the second half, they'll take the ball. Secondly, uh, Penn State has a grand total of 67 yards. That's total offense in the first half. They got 62 on their opening drive. That means for the rest of this first half, just five yards, if my math is correct. The other thing is, I think for Oklahoma, you, you got to somehow get someone else other than Lydell Carr running the football. He's the only guy to really gain yards for Oklahoma. Both these teams like to run the ball, Bob Greasy, and they only have 31 to the Penn State Nittany Lions at halftime. What about the quarterbacking? I think both defenses tried to shut down the running game and force the quarterbacks to throw. John Schaefer looked good the first drive, made some good throws, but since that drive has thrown the ball very poorly, could have had a few more picked off, had two interceptions that turned in for points. Schaefer has to play better if Penn State's going to try and win. And on the other side, Holloway, two for three, and the long touchdown pass. They've shut down his run. They want to force him to throw, and uh, he needs just to not turn the ball over, as we said uh, early in the ballgame. Penn State people at halftime were punching walls virtually over the long ball they gave up the Nittany Lions beaten on a 71 yard touchdown scoring play rarely have they been beaten Trump this year in a long pass play I think the critical part of this play was that Ray Isom the safety for the Penn State, Penn State Nittany Lions was out of the ball game his backup Bookman was in there in coverage and Keith Jackson at 6'3", 240 pounds just flat out ran that defender down the field for a 71 yard touchdown 
One thing I think that's going to bear watching in the second half is the pursuit of Penn State getting after Holloway, the very quick little Oklahoma quarterback. He's taken a lot of hits. He did fumble once late in the first half, which led to a Penn State field goal. But for the most part, Holloway has really done a good job holding on to the ball. They expected to cough it up much more than they did. Don, I can tell you, there are some situations where a player tries to do too much as you look at the first half stats. And the most impressive thing is just a lack of total yardage by both of these teams. Now both teams come in with outstanding defenses. But I think uh, everyone involved on both sides of the ball expected more than 67 yards total offense for Penn State and 136 for Oklahoma. Oklahoma's done nothing out of the wishbone. Lydell Carr of the of the 53 yards rushing for Oklahoma. Lydell Carr has 45 of them. Jamel Holloway who has four 100 yard rushing performances so far this year is minus six. As a matter of fact four of the running backs for Oklahoma have 18 carries for just eight yards. Notice where they have the boomer schooner. Sooner, sooner. <laughs> Those horses won't be running tonight. A year ago when Washington and Oklahoma met in the Orange Bowl. There was a bad turn of events for the Sooners when the little horses came out in the field at the wrong time. Let's watch. Orange Bowl. Wrong time. Let's watch. Orange Bowl, 1985. Oklahoma and Washington were tied at the half. The Sooners moved into field goal range. An illegal procedure foiled the first attempt, but no one told the driver of the Sooner schooner, resulting in a 15-yard unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Oklahoma missed its second attempt. The Huskies scored twice in 62 seconds, winning an exciting Orange Bowl one year ago. Now the Sooner Shooter is <laughs> off in a corner. Locked up. There to stay. Little horse is ready to come out at any moment's notice, but they'll not be called on tonight no matter what the Oklahoma Sooners do. It took a field goal off the board last year, and Washington quickly hit on some scoring plays and scored a major upset that may have cost Oklahoma national championship. Updating is Bob Casas was telling you at halftime, Tennessee, with its fine defense at the Sugar Bowl, despite being a big underdog, the Volunteers are blowing out Miami of Florida, number four in one poll, number two in another, 28-7. to seven. That game in the third quarter. So in all probability with Iowa having been beaten today in the Rose Bowl the outcome of this game will indeed determine which team is national champion Penn State or Oklahoma the Sooners holding to a six point lead as we go into the third quarter it does appear that that decision by Joe Paterno at the outset of the game to delay his decision as to uh, choice with the coin flip now the second half or defer his decision for the for the choice of the coin flip they're going to take the ball now to begin the second half. And in six of Penn State's 11 victories so far this season, they have come from behind. Barry Switzer in his 13 season at Oklahoma with 83% wins. That's the best in the nation among the long term coaches. Barry Switzer, of course, taking over a program that has been a great one since the Bud Wilkinson era. As Switzer says, Wilkinson created the monster. I have to keep feeding it. <laughs> He's done a pretty good job, too. How about that little schooner before Trump? What was it they were saying that was on horsemanlike conduct? On horsemanlike conduct last year. Now the Sooners kick off. Penn State will get the ball. Jimmy Coates at the seven yard line. Out to the 30, and Oklahoma throws him back after a 23 yard return. And Penn State comes on offense first and 10. John Schaefer, quarterback, intercepted twice in the first half. His running back, Steve Smith and Tim Manoa, alternate at fullback. DJ Dozier, the breakaway runner, usually the eye back. David Clark will see action. Eric Hamilton and Ray Roundtree are the wide receivers. Dean Demidio is the tight end. Dozier not having a Hall of Fame night tonight, but he can break loose at any time. 210 with breakaway speed. Dozier. And the Sooners are right there to chop him down. Casillas gets him neck high. Listen up, Jamel Holloway. Those stats for DJ, DJ Dozier did not improve on this down. You see Tupper and Casillas taking on the center. Casillas there to make the tackle. And in the first half, Schaefer was 5 of 15 for just 36 yards, two interceptions. His last five passes thrown in the first half, three incompletions, two interceptions. Second and nine now for the Nittany Lions at their 31. Dozier breaks it for the moment and hits. 
It's out close to the 40 and very close to a Penn State first down. We'll see where they spat the ball. It should be no more than a yard short. Sonny Brown, who had one of those first half interceptions for the Sooners, came up to make the play. Jeff Tupper, Tony Casillas, and Steve Bryan across the defensive front of Oklahoma. The linebackers stood out throughout the first half. Daryl Reed and Kevin Murphy at the outsides. Miliazzo and Bosworth inside. That was the longest Penn State run of the game, an eight-yard advance. They take a two-footer right here. That's what they need, less than a yard. Got to get the ball to the 40 for a first down. One, two, and three tries by fullback Steve Smith at 235 pounds, and he finally got there when it looked like the Sooners had stopped him. Paul Meliazzo on the tackle had a sheer determination by Steve Smith not to be denied. It appears it is a first down, and watch Joe Paterno. He'll take good coaching, he'll take great players, and when all else fails, a little bodily body English. Whatever it takes, and it'll take a lot tonight. Oklahoma with the number one defense in the country, allowing 8.5 points a game. Penn State got seven on its opening drive, but none since. Gary is out to the 43 yard line. Steve Smith on the carry. This is the correct Cotton Bowl score. Wrong numbers up earlier. Texas A&M defeating the Hat Dives Auburn War Eagles 36 to 16. Now on second down and eight. The Nittany Lions ready to roll it from their 32 and here's Schaefer. 42 yard line. That's going to be intentional grounding. Almost got it to row F. I think he threw the ball so far out of bounds. You're going to call intentional. No, it's going to be holding against Penn State. I think, yeah, they're going to call holding. That's about as far out of bounds as I think you can throw a football. Stops the clock with 12.29 to play in the third quarter. Oklahoma has been able to keep pressure on John Schaefer throughout this ball game, but even when he's had time, with the exception of the opening drive of the ball game, as Bob Greasy commented at halftime, he's not thrown the ball well. This uh, defensive line and linebackers of the Oklahoma Sooners, good pressure, but see, he's got time there to throw. There's just there's good coverage downfield, and they're only running three guys out there. That's uh, the two wide receivers and the tight end. 47 is a big number in the storied histories of Oklahoma and Penn State football. It's been 47 years since Penn State has had a losing season. Do you believe that? And Oklahoma has the all time winning first 47 straight games. Running high with the ball is Michael Timpson, a sprinter from Miami, and he crosses midfield, gets down to the 48 yard line. They liken him to their former All American at Penn State, Kenny Jackson, now the Eagles. 21 yards, but Timpson is a lot faster. This is the first time this young man has ever played on the surface of the Orange Bowl. Grew up in Miami, Florida, was a great track star here at Hialeah High School. And he almost breaks it 21 yards. That's the longest gain of the night for the Penn State Nittany Lions. Oklahoma in the lead, 16 to 10, early in the third quarter. Dozier. Sonny Brown coming up from the strong safety to make an excellent play. Knocked down after a gain of a couple of yards down close to the 46 yard line. They'll spot it at the 47 of Oklahoma. Well, you talk about support. These Oklahoma defensive backs, when that ball is snapped, expecting Penn State to run by formation, they are flying to the line of scrimmage. Sonny Brown there to take on the lead blocker and Stop Dozier for little or no gain. DJ Dozier who had over 700 yards rushing. Now it's just 20 yards and nine carries. Schaefer gets time and he dumps it up to Dozier on a second and nine play. It'll leave uh, the Nittany Lions about five yards short as again Sonny Brown is making tackles all over the field makes another for Oklahoma. Now we got to give credit to this defensive backfield of Oklahoma. They are doing an outstanding job of rerouting the Penn State receivers holding them up at the line of scrimmage chucking them down the field. Schaefer's got no one to throw it to. He goes to the outlet man D.J. Dozier. 
Third and seven where they had the ball spotted for the Nittany Lions. Good recovery by Schaefer and a strike to the video. It's a first down for Penn State to the 33-yard line of Oklahoma. 12 yards. Bob Greasy. Read by Schaefer, Don, as he throwing against a zone coverage. His tight end is right here. He's going to come and hook to the outside. Now, both of these linebackers right here will drop, and he'll find the seam in between the linebackers. Tight end hooks up. And Schaefer finds the uh, receiver. It was the best read he's had in uh, about an hour and a half. That was a terrific play by Schaefer. You'll recall he stumbled after taking the snap and recovered to hit a first down throw. Dozier. Now that's Smith who gets the ball. And he is ahead close to the 31 yard line of Oklahoma. Casillas and Bryan knocked him down. When you've got the Lombardi Trophy winner playing nose tackle for you, as Oklahoma does, you don't have to worry about too much happening at the line of scrimmage. Now watch his strength. Just throws the center out of the way. Aradisic there to make the tackle. Penn State loosening up in their final workout yesterday had Radisic running the wishbone offense. Yeah, well, that was a joke, and everybody knew it. <laughs> but they had fun. Leading rusher for Penn State is Steve Smith with just 23 yards and eight carries. Second and nine for the Nittany Lions. Good throw. Coming out was Brian Cyberling, and he is down inside the 25-yard line, still short of a first down, it would appear, where they spot the ball. Well, it appears they're running another pass offense than they did the first half. Most of what they threw in the first half was way down the field. Now they're throwing it underneath to the tight ends. This, once again, is an excellent read. It's just a little drag pattern run by the tight end. He picks up almost eight yards and with the depth of the cornerbacks of the Oklahoma uh, defense I think that play is there anytime he wants it. Look how far off the cornerback is at the top of the screen. He's a good 10 yards off. This the 11th play of Penn State's drive. Schaefer takes it himself. Head down. He's ahead for a first down to the 21 yard line. So Penn State showing a lot of looks on offense comes right down the field at Oklahoma. Got a divot in his face mask. Boy, the wide receiver was wide open. Watch what happens here. There is no problem whatsoever getting the ball to Timpson. The defensive back is way off in coverage, but for some reason, Schaefer prefers to run, but he does pick up the first down. 12th play of the drive coming up. 9-10 to go. Third quarter. They're going to air it out again. A long ball. Timpson's out there. Intercepted oh. again. Sonny Brown comes down with his second of the night. Into double coverage again, Don. Tight end was wide open. Well, it starts to hurt bad. Joe Paterno. Apoplectic over that throw. There's double coverage. There's no way Timpson's going to make that catch unless he's the Jolly Green Giant. He can't keep throwing it into double coverage. Those receivers can't come up with a great play every time. Yeah, this Sonny Brown's done some job for the Sooners, though. He's picked up two, and the Penn State drive is dead. Back of the Orange Bowl. John Schaefer just threw his third interception as we remind you that the 1986 Orange Bowl is brought to you by Porsche, inviting you to see the 944 and the new 944 Turbo at your authorized Porsche dealer. By Snickers, packed with peanuts, Snickers really satisfies. And by General Electric, at GE, we bring good things to life. 12 play, 49 yard drive by the Penn State Nittany Lions. Five minutes and 58 seconds. Schaefer's third interception of the evening. Oklahoma looking to get room to operate. They can't. The Schaefer interception. Well, John Schaefer appears Bob Greasy went to a guy who was double covered and there was somebody ready to score a touchdown up the gut. Tipson right here. Now the double coverage is going to come from the safeties. They're splitting. Now watch the tight end as he goes down the field. Schaefer throws it to the bottom of your screen to Timpson. Now look at the double coverage. Now if you stop it right a little bit further right here. Look at the tight end right in here. Wide open. Six points. 
So with nine minutes to go in the third quarter Oklahoma gets the ball for the first time. The penalty was signaled against the Sooners in the last play penalized half the distance to the goal so they start out almost backed up to the goal line. Penn State's not giving them much. Another marker goes down. I'll tell you what, Don, the wishbone in this situation does not work very well because you got to wait to see what the defense does. Another illegal procedure penalty against Oklahoma. They can't get it any closer to the goal line, but the wishbone doesn't function very well here because the quarterback has to read what the defense does. If anyone makes penetration, you look for turnover or you look for a possible safety. Just saw the Miami Tennessee score flash Miami Hurricanes talking national championship and with reason going into that Sugar Bowl game that conversation is over now unless they mount a miraculous comeback. This is it. This game will decide the national champion of college football. The Sooners leading by six but in trouble deep in their own end as the Nittany Lions stuff the run again. Lydell Carr trying to just get some room to operate for the Oklahoma offense. Once again you don't want, like to point fingers but the center Ewells against Russo. Nice double team although you hope the center helps a little bit. And Russo ends to make an assist on the tackle. Lydell Carr still in my estimation slow getting to the line of scrimmage Don. He's up close to it where he lines up. Penn State defense tough and unrelenting. They'll keep pounding all game long looking for turnovers. Sucking down and almost 10. All the way living dangerously. And it will be third down and 10. Spencer Tillman coming out of the backfield. Jamel didn't see the end of that play. He was looking at the Miami moon. <laughs> Good coverage. You'll watch Shane Conlon once again. Number 31 of the Penn State Nittany Lions on the blitz. He wants to get to Jamel Holloway. Holloway does get him on the ground. Ball overthrown to the sideline. Well, it's third down now and almost 10 yards. This is going to be tough for the punter to function if they don't gain some yards on this one. Great second look. Our producer tonight for NBC Sports is George Finkel. Our director, John Gonzalez. Executive producer, Michael Weissman, with us as the Sooners try to bust it out and the Nittany Lions come hitting hard. Lance Hamilton came up so did Shane Conlon so now the Sooners have to kick it away from their own end zone if they can they don't have a lot of room to do it. Lydell Carr on the on the carry safest thing is to go to the fullback but now Winchester will have uh, no more than 13 yards to function back there and if his heel hits that white line it's a safety. Winchester a standout punter from Marietta Oklahoma. Snapper drills it and Winchester does too as Jim Coates pedals back to reverse, his 49. Reverse. Kimson gets the ball. There's some blockers and Michael Kimson crossing up. Oklahoma has the ball at the Sooners 42 yard line. Get wrapped. Britt comes up with the fumble recovery. This is a well orchestrated play. It comes at the right time, too. They run it into the short side. Most of the punt coverage will be, tech, be protecting the wide side of the field. Let's see if we can see who makes the hit. 60 makes the Mike hit. Mike Mantle, Mickey's nephew. Mantle's hit it all different ways. This one does it with his shoulder pad, and Oklahoma has it back. Interesting so far tonight Trump the high risk offense of the Oklahoma Sooners high scoring high risk has only turned the ball over once Penn State a conservative team has coughed it up four times three interceptions three interceptions and a fumble there by Timpson. His special teams turn over the last time the punt return Spencer Tillman runs the ball for the Sooners and gets it out to the 44 yard line I think it's quite evident also that the. Oklahoma complex wishbone game has been simplified. They don't want to risk a lot of pitchbacks. And I think they had to simplify it a great deal because of the great job that the Penn State defense has done so far on that on that wishbone this evening. Paul Miliazzo, linebacker, being attended to on the sideline. Barry Switzer talks about how you have to run these plays a thousand times to get them to work because 999 is not enough. 
Right now they go right back to the first back fullback Leon Perry on second and eight. He didn't get much. Might have got a couple down out to the 46 yard line. Outside linebacker Don Graham of Penn State knocked him down. Still running running yardage for Oklahoma coming out of the fullback spot. Penn State done an outstanding job of shutting down the other two options on the triple option the quarterback keep and the pitch. Meliazzo limping off. Doesn't get the credit of the other defensive players but he's a standout every game for the Sooners. Mixed in with all the All-Americans. Janell fires on the run. A well-drilled ball. A free ball on the field for the moment. Derek Shepard had it. He caught it. He lost it. And Penn State has the ball. No, Let's see if they rule it. No, no they do not. Incomplete. Down. Don, that was intended to be a pitch. Did you see the Oklahoma running back coming out there behind the receiver? Sure looked like he was looking at Shepard. He throws this ball, but see the see the running back out of the backfield. Oh, I pitching think he's, back. Yeah, yeah, he's trying to pitch I it think back. You're right. Patrick Collins was the trailer. Oh wait a minute, they call that a reception? Who? That, that's pretty shaky right there. It was a reception, it would seem to be a fumble, but the Sooners get the ball in a first down. Now Holloway turns the corner. The first big gainer he's broken, getting up field on the wide sweep. 13 yards on the pickup now. Once again, let's watch this pass reception. It's they, they fake the first option to the fullback. And he throws it. Catch is made by Shepard. They call it a catch. The ball is loose. I don't know how Oklahoma got the ball and 10 yards on that particular instance. Seems to me they got one going their way. Isom down again. Ray Isom was troubled by a knee injury earlier. You recall not that long ago, Oklahoma was backed up to its own end and had to punt the ball, but they got it back on a fumble on the return. Let's watch this reception again. There's Shepard. That's a fumble. Uh, that, that's either Certainly an incomplete pass or a fumble. It's neither first down Oklahoma. Let's watch this reception again from the reverse angle thrown by Holloway to Derek Shepard. Is this a catch? He has the ball one foot. If my estimation that's an incompletion. That's no way. That, but if, even if it's not an incompletion, it's a fumble and Penn State has it. I mean, they lose two ways, not one, two ways. But the Sooners have the ball, and now they have it first down at the 32-yard line of Penn State. Leon Perry gets the call, drives it ahead close to the 29. So walking wounded out there now, one of them, Ray Isom. Now they're looking at the knee that he had taped in the first half again, probably loosening it up a little bit. And, and there's six. Tim Johnson who uh, well, they are band bandaging up for the rest of this football game. I would say that this game has been a very well officiated one though by the Southeastern Conference team. Except for that play. Yeah. Duffy Doherty used to say there ought to be a Hall of Fame for officials. They win a lot of games. Hand up straight ahead and the Sooners belt it on down to the 20 yard line. Lydell Carr gets it. And the Sooners drive on a big turn of events in this game as the Sooners were backed up and stopped in their own end when they punted Penn State fumbled it right back. Now the clock shows 456 to play in the third quarter 16 10 Oklahoma's in the lead. One thing about uh, Oklahoma they are persistent aren't they they are not about to give up on this wishbone they'll keep giving it to Lydell Carr until they get it down to the goal line. Hand up to Lydell Carr, and he's down inside the five-yard line, breaking three tackles en route. A 17-yard gain on the play. Came into the ball game averaging 4.3 yards per carry, but Don, I think the Penn State defense is getting a little tired. You can see the arms going out there to try to make the tackle, and that generally is an indication that your team defensively or offensively is getting tired. That's the longest run tonight I think by Lydell Carr 17 yards first and goal by anybody Holloway broke one for 13 a little earlier now the Sooners leading by six challenging late in the third quarter for another score Holloway gets back ball on the field and let's see it's Oklahoma's ball but back at their 16 yard line and a penalty marker comes in after the play Patrick Collins on the recovery it's a 12 yard loss.
Looked like a late hit, Don. There's no foul. Joe's saying, hey, my guys are going for the football. You can't penalize them for that. Joe Paterno, not a happy guy, and with reason. Well, in this drive, that's two big calls that have certainly hurt Penn State. That incompletion, and now the. There's Collins with the ball. Yeah, that looked like a late hit, though, as they look at the back. They, they, they piled on. There's no question about that. It's hard to legislate aggressiveness out of the game of football, though. When I mean, you want your kids to be flying around out there as best you can. Somebody might have been quarterback hunting though. Second and goal from the eight yard line. That was Patrick Collins on the recovery. Jamel Holloway almost threw that one right away. That's the official clock keeper there. Paterno is upset. Joe Paterno, as we mentioned earlier, has brought three teams in the past to the Orange Bowl, and they all came away victors. All finishing unbeaten seasons. 69, the Nittany Lions beat Kansas by a point. In 70, they beat Missouri. In 74, they beat LSU. If he could kick dirt right now, he would. Right on that official's shoes from the Southeast Conference. Guys are loaded double barrel flags there. They got a couple of them going. Yeah. Penalty stands, though. 25 seconds, second clock has malfunctioned. 25 seconds will be kept on the field. College football, as you know, 25 seconds allotted to get a ball in play, 30 in the pros. Bosworth showing off his cut. Yeah. His due. Looked like it took about 25 seconds to get that haircut, too. Just <laughs> three over heavy, will you? Start the lawnmower. Ninth play of the drive coming up. 4.02 to go in the third quarter. And they're down in the Penn State end, and it's loud. Uh, he made a mistake a there. Mistake. He yeah. could have just backed away. All right. He took a timeout, didn't have to. The officials would have given him time. In all the years that I've been associated with Penn State, I've played there for four seasons. I have never seen Joe Paterno as angry as he has been over the past couple of weeks. He talks a lot about poise uh, with his club, and they seem to be a poised group, but it appears on the field and on the sideline, Penn State is losing some of the poise that Joe Paterno talks about. Gentlemen. Hooks look like he's going to rip off one of those Brooklyn left hooks there. Right now, with 3.55 to play in the third quarter, the Oklahoma Sooners drive on, if they can. Jamel Holloway with more than the Penn State defense to contend with here, but they get the snap off, and Carr takes it down to the six-yard line. Second and goal play was good for two or three. Fifteen thousand people came down to back the Nittany Lions in Miami. A lot of Penn Staters in the Keystone State and all the campuses around the state. There's 61,000 students at Penn State University. And both these teams stayed in the same hotel. Yeah, they're both out on the beach. The place was a zoo. <laughs> now he's doing the right thing. Goes to the official for help. Doesn't have to take a timeout. It's part of the learning process though, of a freshman quarterback in major college football. As, as the Oklahoma band is sitting just to the left of the Penn State band. The pride of Oklahoma, they call them, and the blue band from Penn State. Ball knows of it close to the six-yard line. There's the Oklahoma band. There's the Penn State band. You know, pretty soon we're going to play football here. It's going to be a heck of a game. It's going to continue. Hey, this gives me an opportunity. A lot of people around the country wonder, what in the world is a Nittany Lion? I did too. Penn State, they're Lions. But in the Happy Valley or the Nittany Valley, underneath the Nittany Mountain, that's where the reference, the Nittany Lions. Dummy. I didn't know that. 
Nobody's seen one yet except in white and blue on the football field. Here now is a throw and it's overthrown to Jackson by Holloway. Way overthrown and fourth down arises and the sure footed Tim Lasher comes out. He's three for three tonight. Holloway very upset. You got a player down Derek on the field. Shepard looks like he's out. Derek Shepard. You can see when he overthrew him because Jackson was open and was in the end zone. Easy there Jamel you'll hurt yourself just being upset with yourself. Somebody delivered a knockout hit on Derek Shepard the flanker back who was running a pattern in the end zone. He was running the slant in Jackson runs the drag behind him. The idea is that some of the defensive backs get caught in the wash and you have a tight end out there in the corner of the end zone wide open. He was Holloway overthrew him badly. Got Jamel on the headset now as Derek Shepard is being attended to. Let's take a look at that last pattern as Bob Greasy goes back to the blackboard. Here's Shepard down here. He's going to run a slant, as you were saying, uh, Bob, and he's going to get creamed right in here. Now he's looking back for the ball. He doesn't see the defensive back delivering. Is he looking back for the ball? Now watch right here as he runs right into the safety, and it's lights out. Oh, that's a Floyd Patterson hook right there. Wow. Still KO'd. He appears to be out cold. No, he's not out cold. He's moving his feet. Derek Shepard, a junior flanker from Odessa, Texas. Deep threat for the Sooners. They don't go to him often, but he's got great speed to get deep. The one deep throw of the night that Oklahoma's made was the 71 yard touchdown play. Jamel Holloway hitting the All American tight end, Keith Jackson, for a touchdown that brought the Oklahoma Sooners out to a 10 to 7 lead. The first lead of the game. They since extended it to 16 to 10. No scoring so far in the third quarter. The Sooners getting all their points in the second quarter. A quarter that over the season they've outscored their opposition 146 to 10 in in the second quarter. How big has that turnover been by Oklahoma in this second half? They drive the ball all the way down the field. Schaefer throws an interception as they're about to score. And then they get what they want they get a punt and a good return going to have good field position Timpson fumbles and this is the result of that drive that happened a long time ago didn't it and it's good to see that Derek Shepard is getting up but slowly after that hard hit put on him looking back at the ball and knockout blow delivered by a Penn State defender clean hit. You know, Holloway, I'll tell you something about this kid. He's a great young guy. You know, he's very confident, can be misconceived as cockiness unless you meet him, but he's team player, bright as he can be, very confident. Stepped in here as a freshman, and he might be quarterbacking a national championship team by night's end. Uh, no question that uh, an injury to Troy Aikman, starting quarterback in the fourth game, the second quarter of the fourth game against the Miami Hurricanes. Aikman breaks his ankle. Holloway comes in. And the Sooners with Holloway at quarterback of average close to 475 yards total offense per game close to 38 points. And Shepard looks like he's in next week or last month whichever you want to choose. Oh. You see that score 28 7 Tennessee over Miami. I think Barry Switzer. Switzer could uh, talk to Jimmy Johnson about that last year. Switzer talked a lot and got beat. This year, Johnson talked a lot. He's getting beat. 22 yard attempt. Last year's hit on three previous field goal tries from 26, 31, and 21. All right, there again. So he has now set an Orange Bowl record with four field goals in this game, and it's 19 to 10, Oklahoma. Once again this year it appears that the final gun of the college football season at the Orange Bowl will again decide the national championship. The Miami Hurricanes had a great year but they appear to be gone in the Sugar Bowl losing 28 to 7 to Tennessee in the fourth quarter. The outcome of this Trump decides it. Yeah. And last year we were down here with the uh, Oklahoma and Barry Switzer doing all the talking. This year in the Sugar Bowl Jimmy Johnson was doing all the talking. Apparently to you keep your mouth shut you got a better chance to win. 
Well, I like Shane Conlon's approach. We're going to do our talking Wednesday night at eight. Well, they need 19 points. The Rose Bowl run a little long. They started talking at 8:45, but right now Oklahoma has the lead, 19 to 10. So Penn State needs big plays with 3:09 to go in the third quarter. They won't get one on a return as the kick was deep enough to force a touchback. Joe Paterno staying with John Schaefer. He has not had one of his career games tonight. He's thrown into double coverage, three interceptions. Well, we have a moment. We'd like to welcome station KOMU Television, Columbia, Missouri, returning to the NBC family. John Schaefer moved his team, you'll remember very well, the last possession in the third quarter, only to throw a goal line interception. Here now is a handoff. Manoa tries to break one, and the Sooners knock him down after a gain of just two. Schaefer, 8 of 19 to this point in the ballgame, just 57 yards, and of course those three interceptions. The Lions aren't a passing team. They make no pretense about that. I think they came in 40th in the country in passing. They're going to have to start throwing against this Oklahoma defense because they don't give you the pass or the run. Number one in America. And a leader by nine on the scoreboard. Here's Schaefer ready to put it up. Two very tough yards and a second and seven play with his head down. He got to the 25, running into 275 pound Jeff Tupper. He was going for the tight end. Good coverage by Oklahoma and 35 to 7. Miami's going to have a hard time hitting the top 10 after tonight. Whoa. Tennessee with a great defense all season long. This will be. Biggest win the Volunteers have had in a long time, and it certainly affects the outcome of the national championship, which Oklahoma at the moment is leading the race for. The nine-point lead here over top-ranked Penn State. Here's a throw and a catch. That ball was caught at the 37-yard line. Eric Hamilton coming back at it. First down, Penn State. Let's go down to the sideline. Jimmy. Don, Derek Shepard has got his bell rung a little bit, but he's arguing with the trainers. The trainers want him to sit down for a few minutes, but he wants to play in this football game very badly. They just want to wait a couple of minutes to see if he's able to go back in the game, but he has been arguing vehemently that he is able to go in right now. He wants to play. He really wants to play in this Texas game. <laughs> Uh, there, we got a big discussion on the field here as to whether or not that was a catch. That ball bounced away from the wide receiver. Tony Rayburn was the guy right there in coverage. There's a 13 yard pickup if they count it as a reception. Watch what happens. Got to go down and get it. That's, a, that's an excellent catch. No question about that. He has to go down on the ground. And then I think once he hits the ground, the ball finally rolls away. Third catch of the night, 39 yards. Let's see a little more of that for Penn State. All three for 13 yards of Hamilton's receptions. Dozier breaks it for the moment, then is shut down. He did get ahead for about four yards out to the Penn State 42-yard line as the third quarter's winding down to 118 to play. A most surprising score at the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans where Penn State, Penn, or Tennessee, is blowing out the favorite Miami Hurricanes 35-7. And this is a very important drive for Penn State just to give their defense a rest. In the third quarter, the Penn State defense has been on the field an unbelievable amount of time. Penn State needs to hit a big one, though, and Oklahoma's number one defense doesn't give them up. Manoa runs, and Casillas sheds the block and makes a head on hit. Eight of three. The Big Eight Defensive Player of the Year again, Tony Casillas, the Lombardi Award winner. Every All-American team and projected to be maybe one of the top three people picked in the NFL draft. And play nose tackle, a position that he was changed to two years ago by the defensive coaches of the Oklahoma Sooners, and it was a good marriage. He likes it, plays it well. Speaking of his own marriage, his wife Lisa is a standout student in her second year at the University of Oklahoma Medical School. Pitch back. David Park gets ahead and he has a first down for Penn State as he gets to midfield. 
Six yard per carry runner in the regular season. This young man has the highest yards per carry average of any Penn State running back 5.9. Watch Bosworth. Excellent job by the offensive lineman. Got Radisic just keeping Bosworth away from the tackle and that's exactly what you want your center to do. He's uncovered in some defenses. Get to that attack linebacker and keep him off the tackle. That's going to do it for three quarters of play at the 1986 Orange Bowl. The score is Penn State trailing the Oklahoma Sooners 19 to 10. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. The numbers through three quarters of play at the 86 Orange Bowl, but the big bottom line numbers, Sooners 19, Nittany Lions 10. Our NBC statistician, Ross Schneiderman, pointing out front that Oklahoma was out rushed 34 to 8 in the third quarter. Sooners had only eight yards rushing. Big difference was is the four turnovers by Penn State tonight. That's why Oklahoma leads. Dozier has yes. put it up. Wide open man. But he oh. can't get to the ball. D.J. Dozier let it go too far as he unloaded it for Eric Hamilton, the senior from Cleveland, Ohio, who's caught three tonight for 39 yards and almost went the distance that he got in that one. It was a great fake, too. Look at the way Manoa goes out there to make a block. Sold well, thrown well, but that's the toughest. I think Bob Greasy would agree. That's the toughest pass for any quarterback to throw. A, a receiver going straight away from you. You got to get some air underneath the ball. Let the receiver run under it. He didn't really do that that well. That was a touchdown. Starting linebacker Paul Miliazzo of the Sooners won't be back tonight. He's in street clothes on the sideline as Dozier breaks one on second down and 10 close to the 45 yard line of Oklahoma. Kevin Murphy the outside linebacker made the stop for the Sooners. Tupper Casillas and Brian go in the distance for the most part on the defensive front. Daryl Reed and Kevin Murphy outside backing the line. Bosworth, Miliazzo was in the middle. Dante Jones in. And State now with a passing down against the number one defense. Demidio sets to the right. 89. They could be looking at him. How about a screen? Tip ball. Another fine play by the secondary. That was Tony Rayburn who tipped it away from Eric Hamilton. Now let's go back to Jimmy Cephalo. I'm by the sidelines with Paul Miliazzo. Paul, you've broken fibula. You're out for the football game. Yeah, I am. Uh, you know, just some some things happen like that, and uh, it's, I guess I'm glad it's the last game of the season. And that you know, but on the good side, Tennessee is winning the football game that's by a score great. of 35 I mean, to seven. That means a national championship if you're able to hold on. That's great. I mean, that's a dream for us, and uh, that's that's the only thing that's keeping me from tears because. Uh, with the national championship, that's that's something we work for all year long. Thank you very much. Gentlemen. Out into the end zone, 45 yards, but only a net 25 as it comes back out on a touchback. So the Nittany Lions get the football, and they have to make something big happen soon. As right now, they have to wait to get the ball back. Oklahoma with a nine-point lead, ready to take over first and ten. The 1986 Orange Bowl is brought to you by Plymouth, division of Chrysler Corporation. Plymouth, the pride is back, born in America again. By exceptionally smooth Michelob, where you're going, it's Michelob. And by Nepa, all the right parts in all the right places. Don Cricky with Bob Trumpy, Bob Greasy, and Jim Cephalo at the 1986 Orange Bowl in Miami. Again, this game, the signal event in college football. For the fourth time in five years, the national championship on the line. As Spencer Tillman breaks it for the Sooners. And he's all the way out across his 40 to the 41-yard line. Mr. Greasy will now show us how it all works. Watch the left guard right here, Hudson. He's going to pull and make a trap block, and the runner is going to cut back a little bit. But watch the left guard as he pulls behind the line of scrimmage and blocks out on the defensive end. Running back makes a good cut back upfield. Tillman with a 20-yard gain has now gained 32 for the night on five carries. The rushing yards have come with great difficulty. Liddell Carr has taken a pounding by that Penn State defense. 
as he carries on first down out to the 43 yard line got about two but the Sooners now the nine point lead in the national championship probably waiting at the final gun if they can hold on are right now trying to run the clock and it's moving with 13 14 to play in the game on in seven games this year for the Penn State Nittany Lions they have scored game winning points after turnovers that's what they're looking for right here they need somebody from Oklahoma to put the ball on the ground Sooner wishbone has been simplified in this game. It's an offense based on quickness and deception, but they've given it to the fullback more than anyone else. Just a straight ahead dive. Time second back through. Tillman's written down. On second and seven, he didn't get a thing. Pete Kirkendall came up to get him, a sophomore from Elmira, New York, who was maybe the best high school lineman in America the year he came out of high school. Now, Don, the, the intensity level of both of these teams has remained at a very high level throughout this football game. I can't remember a game when both teams working as hard as they have worked and at times gotten very little to show for it. Derek Shepard knocked out not that long ago gearing it back into battle for the Sooners. Third and six Oklahoma. Patrick Collins first down and plenty more as he breaks it inside the Penn State 40. Lance Hamilton made was one of the tacklers along with Ray Isom. And there's 12:01 to go in the fourth quarter of this football game. That's the first carry of the ball game. Good for 18 yards, and that's the first time the pitch has worked for the wishbone from Oklahoma tonight. The Oklahoma Sooners, a storied football tradition. They won back-to-back -back national championships in the 50s. They did it again in 74 and 75, looking for their first national title in 10 years. Final Whoa. numbers are up at the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. Heavily favored Miami, talking national championship going in, was blown away by underdog Tennessee, 35 to 7. So the obvious, the winner of this game will be the national championship of the college game for the 85 season. The legal procedure against Oklahoma will make it first and 15. The Sooners with the full package, the flash and the speed and offense, the number one defense in the country on the other side of the ball, and they're out. First and 15. Look at that strike. Ison comes up, puts a hit on Leon Perry. Maybe Trump, Pat Jones, the coach of Oklahoma State, said at best, he said, Oklahoma isn't number one, they're number two. I read him behind the Chicago Bears. <laughs> Now the defensive line of Penn State though has done an outstanding job. That's Palomalu making the tackle there. On the fullback Leon Perry and. Uh, the wishbone just hasn't worked tonight even though there's 19 points on the scoreboard and a nine point lead for Oklahoma. Sooners with that array of great runners that can break any play the distance. Jamel Holloway calls his own number working hard. He's down Bumble. inside free ball. And State they got it. Heaven, and so does the referee. So with 11.05 to play in the game, Penn State trailing 19 to 10 gets the ball. Don Holloway came in for Oklahoma being their leading ball carrier. But he really, when he runs the ball, doesn't protect it very well. You got to tuck that thing away. He runs the second option, that is the quarterback keep, turns up field, makes a nice move. Now he's got it kind of loose there. There are a host of people making the tackle, making the hit. Otko, I think, is the one who finally knocks it loose. Second turnover of the night for Oklahoma. Six total for both teams. Penn State now back in business. Penn State has to get it in the end zone. 11.05 to play, trailing by nine. Smith, the fullback's not going to get far. In fact, nowhere at all. He got to the line of scrimmage, the 35. It'll be second down and 10. Ryan Bosworth, the All-American linebacker, the eye of the storm on defense, they call him, made the stop. Watch the way he attacks that line of scrimmage. Recognition, avoids the block by Demidio, is right there to make a good tackle. Uh, tell you, this guy looks like Jack Lambert playing there. He, he's a tall, thin guy, even though it looks like he weighs like 235 pounds, he only weighs about 225, and man, he, he can give you a header. Second and ten is Schaefer rolls. Lots of pursuit. 
And lots of hitting from the Sooners. Dade Jones, number 50, got him. High fives all around, and with good reason, Kevin Murphy was also on the play. Dante Jones watched Bosworth this time on the blitz. Takes on the offensive line. He's got great speed. He's there to. He comes from a long way away, but he's a factor. They just announced the score in the Orange Bowl, and all those people from Dade County went, oh. Schaefer now 9 for 21 throwing the ball for 70 yards but the big number the three interceptions. Throwing a strike Canidio has it but there's virtually a way short of the first down it's some gain out to the 39 yard line of Penn State. But right there to ride him down was Tony Rayburn of Oklahoma as coach Switzer is starting to think championship ring right now. Coach Paterno knows his team is in trouble with fourth down coming up. He's got to kick the ball back. Clock running. 9.15 to play in the game. The national championship game at the 86 Orange Bowl. John Bruno's booms some beauties and hits another for Penn State. Ricky Dixon will run it back. Not far. Ricky Dixon returns to the 20-yard line. 45 yard punt and a four yard return as coach Barry Switzer in his 13th year number 13 could be the lucky one. This is Bob Costas back in New York in the Sugar Bowl Miami had a brief 7 nothing lead over Tennessee the volunteers come on to win it 35 to 7 in the process they sacked Vinny Testaverde seven times and intercepted three of his passes Jeff Powell of the volunteers ran for better than 100 yards including a 60 yard touchdown. Now it's very clear the Oklahoma Penn State game is for the national championship so let's go back to the Orange Bowl. Thank you Bob we have 855 to go here at the Orange Bowl. Oklahoma that far away from the national title to be the third under Barry Switzer as head coach. End up goes to Stafford the freshman runner a spectacular athlete out of St. Louis as a backup pitcher warming up now. I think it'd be a good idea Don uh, Schaefer's been in there the whole ball game has thrown some poor passes uh, three interceptions and uh, some of the other ones could have been why not go with another guy maybe come in and fire something up I don't think it's too late we got eight minutes and 30 seconds they're going to get the ball at least two more times it's up to the defense now to stop Oklahoma. Let's see what the defense can do on second down and eight coming up. Oklahoma leading 19 to 10. A very quick handoff that time by Jamel Holloway. Defense was looking for him but he gave it off to Perry and Leon busted ahead for a gain to about the 27 yard line. It'll be third down and five. You know his uh, yeah his 54 game streak is in jeopardy here. In games that he started since the seventh grade never lost. First he started against Oklahoma though. It could be 0 and 1 against the Sooners. That's true. There are a lot of people 0 and 1 against the Sooners. Penn State is they've only played Oklahoma once before. Lost to him 14 nothing in 72. End up. Sooners run the ball not very far but they'll they're going to be short of the first down they send out their kicker their punter at the clock running seven that's it seven twenty eight and ticking. Don you can tell that the Penn State is really going after the football trying to come up with a turnover. Let's watch and see if they try with a punt block here. Just to disrupt Oklahoma get good field position anything like that. Winchester has been really booming the ball Sooners have a tremendous kicking game field goal kickers been perfect on four tries fumble by Coates did he get it he did at the 41 yard line. So now the Nittany Lions trailing 19 to 10 go with the backup thrower Matt Kisner who's only put the ball up 19 times this season has completed 10. The Super Bowl tournament continues at NBC Sports this weekend on Saturday. Bob Trumpy and I will be here at the Orange Bowl as the Browns go against the Dolphins then on Sunday the Raiders are at home to play the surprising New England Patriots. Right now at the Orange Bowl 656 to play in the game Penn State has a new quarterback Matt Kisner a junior from Youngwood Pennsylvania 6 2 190 pounder he's thrown for one touchdown and one interception this year he's going to be throwing now 
He's had some experience this season in the first play of the Alabama game in relief of injured John Schaefer. He threw an 11 yard touchdown pass to Ryan Silverling. For the Lions only touchdown in the game so Penn State hopes this guy comes in hot. Tough as it Bob Greasy to come in at this point though off the bench in a game you have to throw in to win. Get to Bob in a moment it's right now it's first and ten for Penn State. Kisner dropping back. Dozier gets it on a swing. And these Sooners are striking they swarm to the ball relentless in their pursuit. And Dozier got ahead for only about four yards. What about Bob Greasy coming off the bench with very little warm up time with the pressure of a national championship game on? Well, there's no question, Don. He's going to be nervous, but the good part about it is he knows it's not going to be his fault if they lose. He can be a hero, so he's got to think positive. He says, I'm coming into this game. I've got everything to gain and nothing to lose because I've nine points behind already. Schaefer, pitch pass for only 76 yards, was intercepted three times while he was in for the Nittany Lions. Dozier breaks one. First down, Penn State. He's down to the 47 yard line with 6.04 in the clock running, a 10 yard gain. Well, sometimes just the quarterback coming in, whether he does anything good or bad, just his sense in the huddle can lift you as a football player. If he comes in and he claps his head, he says, Gentlemen, here we go. Forget what's happened at this point. We're going to the end zone. It gives you a little mental lift. Rayburn on the ground. Tony Rayburn's made some big plays tonight for the Sooners. Made them all season long. We'll be back after this. Open. Time out on the field with 6:04 left to play. Penn State having to change quarterbacks. Their starter, John Schaefer, threw three interceptions, moved his team well on three different drives, but when they get down close, the coverage was there, and so were the interceptors. And so John Schaefer, number 14, will watch the rest of this in the sideline. He's a junior, will be back next year. And the thing about John Schaefer is he's not thrown the ball badly, he's made bad choices. And the, the position of quarterback is a position of choice. You design an offense to take advantage of a defense. And it all goes back to that drive at the under, other end of the stadium when uh, Penn State's about to score. We have the tight end open down the middle. He throws it into double coverage on the outside. And all of a sudden, things start to go apart for Penn State and John Schaefer. And now Kisner in to try to rescue this football game. And that will take some doing with 6.04 to go. The national championships, 50, 55, and 56 under Wilkinson, 74 and 75 under Switzer. As the Sooners uh, could be closing in on national championship number six. And many of their top people are back. Most of them. Same is true for Penn State. Another big play by a Sooner defender diving at the ball was Bosworth breaking up a play. He reminds you a lot of Lambert, the former Steeler great, the way he gets downfield. Kesner throws the ball better than Schaefer, a better passer. This time he's going to roll to his left side. He's got to get his shoulder square. Does a good job of it. Pretty good motion. He got his shoulder square to the line. Trump, you were talking a little bit earlier. Just doesn't get the ball out far enough in front of the receiver, and Bosworth knocks it away. That's his first pass downfield, though. You would expect him to be a little off target, right? Smart play, starting with an easy pass earlier, a I screen agree. pass. Yes. Hits. Hit the ball to Smith. He's got a Penn State first down to the 33 yard line of Oklahoma. And a penalty marker down. That stops the clock with 5.44 to play in the game. That's going to be against Penn State too. A late hit by Penn State. Trying to help on the block. This is a shovel pass. There is no jeopardy here for the Penn State Nittany Lions. This ball is dropped. It's a forward pass. Smith a, a real load. Oh you see the hit that he puts on Ricky Dixon knocks him out cold. Joe upset. This play's coming back. They make a lot of smart plays in the new lines. That was a dumb play. Well, it's a frustration of being down 19 to 10, working so hard for your shot at an undefeated season and a national championship, slipping away, 544 left, and the offense really hasn't done its job tonight, struggled somewhat. You take out your frustration with a late hit. 
And it hurts. The only Oklahoma loss this year was 27 to 13 to Miami. And of course, that gave Miami a lot of impetus to contend for a national championship and talk about one. But Miami was beaten 35 to 7 in the Sugar Bowl by Tennessee. Scott Radisick is the young man at the penalty, but will be called on now. Penn State will have a first down. It's a dead ball foul. Then they mark off 15 yards, make it first and 25. Referee IA, a team of Southeastern Conference officials from a neutral conference. Oklahoma, of course, a member of the Big Eight, and Penn State an independent. Interesting. That was a 15 yard pass completion and a 15 yard penalty. This play will start from the same place the last one did. So, with backup quarterback Matt Kisner in the game for the Nittany Lions, they now start out in a jam, down by nine in the fourth quarter, 5.25 to play. He's going to throw now on first and 25. Whoa. Cyberling has it. He's inside the 30 to the 29. Got back about 16 yards, 18 yards where they stopped the ball. He fired that one. That was good fundamentals by a quarterback. Excellent. Set up well. Looked a linebacker off, threw it to Cyberling, the tight end, wide open. That's nice. There's a distinguishing characteristic about this Penn State team. It's character. They fought back from behind all season long to win games and go 11 and 0. Kisner has now put the ball up four times, completed three for 36, and he's ready to fire again. Another strike. Cyberling out of bounds for a first down. 4:34 to play in the game. Oklahoma leads 19 to 10. 13-yard pickup by Cyberling, just a pattern underneath the zone coverage by the Oklahoma Sooners. Good protection. Kisner has time to look out there in the flat. Another first down. Now three catches, 37 yards for Cyberling. Clark is hit hard by Donnie Jones linebacker shooting the gap for the Sooners and the knockdowns made at the 17 yard line the game clock ticks 421 and running as Oklahoma continues to lead 19 to 10 Penn State's been here before down at this spot they must get the ball in the end zone here clock running 405 to play coach Switzer one to speed up that clock if he can as the Nittany Lions are challenging now. They have to get in the end zone though. They get back in this game. Gesner takes it to the 10. On a second and 10 play, he got ahead for about six yards. He certainly appears to be ready. He's not shown any signs of sitting on the bench for three quarters. Throwing the ball very well. This is the 12th possession of the football game for Penn State. They've scored on both previous possessions starting outside their own 35. That is going in to score. They started at their 40 this time. Back to the Orange Bowl after this. We're at the 1986 Orange Bowl in Miami. It's been a beautiful week in South Florida, clear and sunny, a very warm night. Temperature in the high 70s. Both these teams playing spirited, aggressive football throughout. Tuned and honed to a fine edge for this national championship game. And now the pressure is tremendous on the Penn State Nittany Lions and Coach Joe Paterno. As they come in number one in America in every poll. Unbeaten through 11 games, but trailing Oklahoma 19 to 10. And after the defeats earlier today, Iowa's loss to UCLA in the Rose Bowl, and then Tennessee's route of Miami in the Sugar Bowl. The winner of this wins the national championship. A backup quarterback is in for Penn State. Matt Kisner, and he's completed four or five for 49 yards. Looking in the end zone, he takes a hard hit from Dante Jones on third and four. He got only a yard. Now fourth down comes up. And with 3.23 in the clock running, what does Penn State go to? They're sending out Monka, their field goal kicker. Probably a pretty good percentage here. They think they're going to get the ball back. Penn State defense has done an excellent job. You got the prospect of an onside kick. 
You need points right now to put yourself in a position the next time you have the ball down to win. Massimo Manca, a long range bomber. He's hit once tonight. This will be from 27 yards. He's hit from 26. Very effective from way out if need be. No Not good. effective at all there, though, as Maka hooks one. The Sooners get back the ball, and Penn State again drives down only to come up empty. Man, Maka thought it was good. He went bent down, picked up the tee, turned around. He thought it was good. I think he didn't want to see what happened. That was gone early. Now two minutes and 46 seconds from Barry Switzer's third national championship. Good hold. Ball right on the tee. Now watch his reaction. See? He thinks it's good. And then the official goes, uh, what? Are you crazy? In uh, college football, the uprights on the goalpost are a lot shorter than they are in the pros. Sometimes the officials will miss those. Sooners just go to the run looking to make that clock tick. It's down to 240 and running as Oklahoma continues to win 19 to 10 over Penn State. Penn State also has three timeouts left. I got to think about using them. If there's any one unit that has to be saluted in this game. It's the defense of Oklahoma. Number one in America coming in averaging only 8.5 points a game giving up to the opposition and has allowed number one Penn State just 10 tonight. Forcing four Penn State turnovers. They intercepted the Nittany Lions three times and also got a fumble on a punt return. Spencer Tillman working to stay in bounds. He does not. Goes out of bounds at the 33 yard line with 2.01 to play in the game. Ten yard gain. That a guy's right. We are number one all season long. You see him flashing that number one sign. Tonight they can do it legitimately and it means something. Penn State gave it the full shot as Paterno said before the game Trump he's never had a more dedicated team he's never had a team work as hard for one game as the Nitty Lions have for this matchup this showdown of heavyweights but in the end with great defense Oklahoma appears ready to prevail and win the national title ahead on given Lydell Carr gets out to the 38 yard line a gain of four all Switzer wants to see is that clock tick ready to come out there and belt somebody a former Arkansas he's, a, he's hog excited linebacker. isn't he yeah we'll come back with the conclusion of the Orange Bowl right after this due to the length of tonight's game the Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson will not be seen stay tuned for local news followed by late night with David Letterman on NBC 152 to go in the Orange Bowl Oklahoma that far away from the national championship Back to the run go the Sooners and they break a big one. Off and running is Lydell Carr and he is going to go the distance. Lydell Carr is in standing up and the national championship with certainty now belongs to Coach Switzer and his Sooners. 142 to play and they own it. 61 yard touchdown run by Lydell Carr. His 19th carry of the ball game. Joe Paterno said we want to at least try to Cut down on the big plays that Oklahoma comes up with. The 71 yard touchdown reception by Keith Jackson, 61 yards by Lydell Carr. And the Sooners are national champions. And Nicky's the MVP, Lydell Carr, 19 carries, 148 yards. I think he gave out 11 game ball to the Oklahoma defense. He did a great job, there's no question. Defense won this football game though. Lasher spins one up. Boy, that's no good. Could care less. 142 to play with a 25 to 10 lead for the Sooners. Somewhat fitting that Lydell Carr, as heavily as he's been worked tonight, comes up with the longest run of the evening. Penn State trying on the blitz and look at the speed of this kid. He's not a little guy either. He's 6 2 over 200 yards. And the Oklahoma Sooners, when he breaks through the line of scrimmage, look, go, go, go. Youthful exuberance. 
Yeah, you could. Coach Switzer, a very accommodating guy with a huge battery of press attending every practice, but you could see him tighten up as the week wore on. He, very vivid, and he's constantly reminded of the failure here last year, the Sooners, who came in with a chance to win the national championship and were upset by one of the best coach teams I've ever seen, the Washington Huskies. And this year, Oklahoma came back to win the national title, and they did. Been a great year for Penn State, ending on a disappointing note. Joe Paterno with another standout team, number one in all the polls coming in, but a decided underdog in the opinion of the odds makers. And in the end, it proved to be the Sooners a decided victor as they now lead 25 to 10 with 142 to play. If there is a positive aspect for Penn State, only six seniors graduate. They'll be someplace playing New Year's Day again next year. It hurts with all that work and all that effort while on the other side the jubilation of Oklahoma is something to behold players jumping up and down as Penn State runs it back reverse with the ball Ray Roundtree but there's a sooner right there to get him and a penalty marker down with 135 left to play. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman. The coordinating producer of NBC football is Ted Nathanson. The telecast of tonight's game has been produced by George Finkel, directed by John Gonzalez, halftime produced by Antoinette Machiaverna, technical director Lenny Stucker. Thanks to NBC statistician Ross Schneiderman and to our spotters, John Crowers from Penn State and Pat Hanlon from Oklahoma. On the second half tonight, Penn State had their chances. They had possessions of five minutes and 58 seconds. Four minutes and ten seconds, four minutes and nine seconds, didn't score on any one of the three. Nope, and after the game, we'll be talking with Coach Barry Switzer as his team about to be crowned national champions for a third time under his reign, a sixth time in the storied history of Oklahoma football. Will the Sooners win the national title? At 135 to go. Penn State almost out of time and out of luck as Kisner dumps one off. Manoa takes a stick. And the game clock continues to tick down to 125 and running. Don uh, Bosworth not taking himself out of this football game. He wants to be there for the last glorious second of his first national championship. 44 made the tackle on that play. The guys getting their stuff together. It'd be a pretty good party going a little later. That is just fun to watch. You, you, you hate to see Joe Paterno and and a man of such great uh, congeniality and yet aptitude for the game of football and uh, he's coached a lot of time and you put up with crazy haircuts and irresponsible kids and try to make them national champions. You don't get too many irresponsible kids at Penn State they're gone under his regime. Paterno has a favorite quote Trump Robert Browning that a man's reach should always exceed his grasp and last year this team was six and five blown out at the close of the season by Notre Dame and Pittsburgh from the ashes they rose up to have a number one ranked team but not a national championship as the Sooners with high power offense and the best defense in the land ready to close in and make it official 50 seconds to go Penn State calls a timeout Turno called by a lot of people just a wise uncle and there are several people on this Penn State football team one of them is Shane Conlon who was a big part of the team success this season who has another year of eligibility left he could turn pro this year if he wants someone asked him whether he would or not he said it's up to Joe Paterno I'm going to talk to him and do what he says that's what kind of confidence these kids have in Mr. Paterno. Bob Greasy, it's been a great year. You've been on the playing field of this Orange Bowl many times, and I guess most of them have been good times in the years you had with the Dolphins. But after going through a season like Penn State had 11 wins and then to culminate, so many people remember the last game, which is a tough part of losing the final game and one this important. Very true, uh, Craig, and I think you hit the nail right on the head. The defense won this ball game. Penn State's offense, which was third, as you said, they win with defense first, special team second, and offense. They just didn't have enough against the number one uh, defensive team in the country, the Sooners, and uh, they'll be back. Paterno is a class act, and he's got a lot of good players for next year. 
Oklahoma fans up and chanting as Kisner drops to throw, puts one up. It's caught out to the 23-yard line. The game clock ticks down to 44, and the Nittany Lions stop it one more time. All right, it'll stop because they got to change the markers for the first down, and they leave the field trying. You got to admire that in any football team. Another throw, another catch. That game clock winding out. Dean Demidio catching the last one. We'd like to give special thanks to Athletic Director Wade Walker of Oklahoma and Sports Information Director Mike Treps, and also to Athletic Director Jim Tarman of Penn State University and Dave Baker, the Sports Information Director. Again, the final gun of the final college game of the season decides the national championship. The Oklahoma Sooners, perhaps one of the most talented college teams ever, comes through after failing in the Orange Bowl a year ago. Orange Bowl week in Miami, a civic celebration, one that may be unparalleled anywhere in America, culminating again tonight with a game for the national title. Special thanks go to the president of the Orange Bowl committee, Jack Hale, President-elect Stan Marks, Vice Presidents Larry Adams and James Barker, Secretary Treasurer Lewis Hall, and also to the members of the Orange Bowl Committee, Nick Crane, the head of the selection committee. He didn't do bad, one and two. Steve Hudson, Steve Lynch, and all the people that make this a great and happy civic event. Not a happy ending for Penn State, but it was a great season for Joe Paterno and the Nittany Lions, albeit a losing one in the final game. And I don't think there's anything wrong with being 11 and one and fighting as long and hard as they did to beat a superior team, I believe, in Oklahoma. And the turnover has just killed him. Be a countdown to a national championship for Oklahoma. Coming down with the ball is Daryl Giles. Now it's down to 18 and running. Yard markers are moved. Box is stopped momentarily. Don, you realize that with Oklahoma's victory tonight, the only Big A team in bowl competition this year to win. Colorado lost, Nebraska lost, and Oklahoma State lost. Only fitting that another big play by the defense, Liddell Glenn, a junior cornerback, runs it back, and he almost took it the distance as he's down with three seconds to play. And the final numbers are up. Four seconds to go. Clock stop. And it's 25-10, Oklahoma in the lead. And Oklahoma about to grab the golden ring one more time. Well, may I make a suggestion? Last year, the Boomer Schooner cost them a penalty. But when this uh, clock ticks down, I think it has every right to take a joint up and down the field. There'll be no flags, and you'll still get the national championship. I think those ponies are ready to run. Yes, they are. Run sound. Well primed, rested. <laughs> in that corner all night. They're waiting with their driver and their shoveler. <laughs> Important number part of the entourage. One. Steve Bryan, you're right. You are number one. That is great. Four seconds left. This will do it. The Kepper on a national championship season for the Sooners of Oklahoma. Oklahoma 25, Penn State 10, and Coach Switzer goes out of victor in a national championship coach. You see what he said? You can read his lips. Way to go defense. Way to go defense. So how do you vote an MVP for the entire defensive performance against Penn State tonight? Joe Paterno across to extend congratulations. A bitter disappointment for Paterno and for Barry Switzer. Really a great comeback of sorts after being upset here a year ago and a disappointment that he's been reminded of all year long. Let's go down to Jimmy Cephalo now. Barry, congratulations. It's a place to be a clear-cut national championship for you. I hope so. The two great defensive teams played now. Penn State's a great defensive team. Oklahoma's a great defensive team. Earlier on the, in the season, a lot of people expected Oklahoma to be here as national champions at the end of the year. Did you ever well, doubt it? I, 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 well, yeah, when our quarterback got hurt, but yet our, our guy did a super job. It was a great team effort. Penn State's a great team, and we're fortunate. It was our night. It was our night. 
And that's it. A closing cut, Bob Trumpy. Uh, I'm just uh, shocked at the performance of Oklahoma. They didn't do what they do well, and that is run the wishbone. Lydell's car's numbers are kind of surprising, but that last run for all those yards, it was the turnovers and the, the poor choices of John Schaefer that really gave Oklahoma the opportunity, and it's fun to see a team that's worked so hard win the national championship. Well, boy, they won it fair and square in the playing field, and after Tennessee's upset of Miami, it was all decided here, and now Jack Hale, the president of the Orange Bowl committee, ready to present the Orange Bowl trophy to Coach Barry Switzer for Bob Trumpy and Bob Greasy and Jimmy Cephalo. This is Don Crickey, Oklahoma national champion. And now we go to New York and Bob Costas. Bob.